It's the Eastern Michigan University Huron Football Show with Coach Jim Harkema, hosted by John Fountain. Today, previewing the Hurons game against San Jose State Spartans in the California Bowl at Fresno, California. This program is sponsored in part by Great Lakes Bank Corp., your partner in life, and by the General Motors family at Ypsilanti, BOC Assembly, Service Parts Division, and Hydromatic Division. And now, here's John Fountain. We've got a fun 30 minutes ahead this evening as we take a look at Michigan's most successful collegiate football team of 1987 and how they earned a berth in one of only 18 holiday bowls to be played this year. We're going to do some other things too, though. We're going to talk to two of the people that Jim Harkin calls his separators, the quarterback of the Hurons, Ron Adams, and the running back, Gary Patton. We've also got some exciting game film of the Hurons' opponent, in the Cal Bowl, the Spartans of San Jose State, and we've got some highlights of some previous bowls and some things that will tell you that the Cal Bowl is more than just uh, a football game. In a nutshell, this is the story. Jim Harkham came to Eastern Michigan University five years ago in 1983, and he has turned the program around. He's taken it from the bottom of the Mid-American Conference, from relative obscurity to national prominence, conference championship, and a berth in the California Bowl. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jim Harkema Eastern Michigan University football show featuring the very successful head coach of the Eastern Michigan Hurons and the Mid-American Conference Coach of the Year, Jim Harkema. Coach, this is not the only time that uh, you've turned a program around more than a decade ago. You did the same thing at, at Grand Valley State. Uh, you're getting a reputation for that. Tell us the turnaround story uh, with particular emphasis at Eastern Michigan? Well, I think that, uh, John, that the key thing, situation is that uh, uh, we've tried to start off and build a foundation. A foundation starts with attitude. And you develop an attitude that helps you towards your goal. And you look for players that have some faith and belief in what you're doing, and you start building on those people. There, in any program, there's going to be negatives. There's things that people from the outside will look into, into your program and say, you can't win because. One of those was, we're too close to the University of Michigan, and I've always said that there's room on Washtenaw Street for two, vi two champions, and, uh, uh, I, and I, obviously that's uh, been done. And, and, the, and the key thing is that each step, each senior group that we have had has done a little bit more, and I think that it was the culmination against Bowling Green that we emphasized to our players that they were playing for all those senior groups and that each group did a little bit more than the previous group had done. Coaches, you moved through this season. Was, was there one particular moment maybe where you didn't say anything to your staff or the players or the media, but, but maybe you went home and you said to your wife, well, it. we're going to win it this year. <laughs> well, I think uh, when I ran off the field at Miami, I saw Jim Streeter, our sports information director, and I said, we're for real now. And uh, so that might have been the time. I tried to keep the focus game by game, but uh, I do remember that vividly, John, that I, I looked at Jim as we came off and I said, they're going to believe about <laughs> us now. So uh, maybe that was the time. Well, it really has been a magical year for Eastern Michigan, a year that uh, took them all the way to the top. But, you know, you mentioned in, in your conversation about taking negatives and turning them into positives. Uh, that's what this whole road warrior campaign is about, isn't it? Without a doubt. Uh, we, we looked at it last uh, uh, winter and looked and said, hey, we've got five road games, only three at home in the conference. Everybody else is four and four except Kent State, who's five at home and three on the road. And nobody won on the road the year before in the Mid-American Conference. So we said we want to take a positive stance about that, not allow that to be the reason that we were going to lose and have an excuse. So we just uh, label ourselves road warriors. We talked about when Whenever we went to Michigan to practice in the spring, that we had the advantage over our opponents because we were preparing to play on the road. They were just casually walking out of their <laughs> locker room and going to practice. And quite simply, we, we used it and built it. And uh, slowly but surely, they developed an attitude that they were going to play well on the road. And they did play well on the road. I guess the, what the proof of the pudding is in the results. And the results are that uh, Eastern Michigan won four or five road games in the Mid-American Conference. 
and the only team in the Mid-American Conference to have a winning record. And, and you look back at another year, uh, that was say, the same thing was true the year before. Even Miami, the conference championship uh, team, didn't uh, win uh, on the road. Exactly. Uh, last year, everybody lost on the road, including Miami, who had five at home, three on the road, one and two on the road. And so for the last two years, the Road Warriors of Eastern Michigan are the only ones to, to win on the road. And qu quite simply, we were four and one. And I thought that was a great achievement for our football team. And now, unfortunately, you have to go on the road again. <laughs> but I, I don't think you're going to mind this one because the road is going to take you all the way to Fresno and the California Bowl, and uh, you ought to be used to it to now. It ought to be to your advantage to be out there. Well, I think on campus they're calling it the ultimate road trip. <laughs> so we're, we are looking forward to a week out there in Fresno, and uh, uh, we, we, the players are very excited. Coach, let's, let's talk a little bit about your ball club. Uh, we've had a number of conversations through the years, and you've always said that to have a championship team, number one, you've got to have the talent. Then once you have the talent to come to the top, you've got to have a couple of people that you call your separators, the people that take you up to a new plateau. Uh, tell us about your two separators this year. Well, we have two young men that have been in our program for four straight years, and the, and the first guy is uh, Ron Adams, who is an excellent quarterback. He's a, I think he's, a, first of all, a tough guy. He's a competitor, but he has uh, sacrificed maybe some statistics this year to be the leader and find a way to win and get the job done somehow. And I think quite simply that uh, uh, he, I think he is just as fine a quarterback when he's on as I've ever coached. And I did have a kid drafted from Grand Valley in the 11th round. And when Ronnie's on, he's every bit as good as that young man was. So I think, uh, and, and especially in the stretch run, when we needed to get better and needed to uh, get excited about our football team, and Ronnie did it. And, uh, you know, we're just very proud of him. And a little bit about the other separator, uh, the fellow who holds all the rushing records at Eastern Michigan University now, number 34, Gary Patton. Well, Gary's an exciting football player. He's somebody that electrifies the crowd. He gets your, your players excited because he makes a uh, extra cut and gets away from people. He's a great player coming out of the backfield and catching the ball, although we haven't thrown as much to him this year as we have in the past. And then at the same time, the thing that I've been proud about Gary is he's gotten better every time we've gone out on the field, from the spring to the fall, from fall to spring, right straight through. Gary's improved on his, on his uh, God-given talent. So he, both of those kids, I think, John, are, love to play, love to practice, and appreciate the competition and can play to the competition. We'll talk with Ron Adams and Gary Patton when we return. Basically, I'm just throwing the number one if he's open. If he's not, then I'm going to two and three. I've been trying to get to this point ever since I stepped foot on Eastern Michigan's campus. It's really out. We stopped by an Eastern Michigan University practice session the other day and talked with one of those separators that Jim Harcum had talked about, Ron Adams, a 6'1", 195-pound senior quarterback out of Taylor. Taking a look at some of the game films of San Jose, are they going to present problems to you defensively that you haven't seen in the Mid-American Conference? Well, I haven't had the opportunity to sit down and really look at their film in depth, but uh, I guess from what I understand, they run the Bears 46 defense, which is, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us because it's something that we haven't seen here in the Mid-American Conference, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. we got a solid offense, and, you know, from what I understand, they have a good defense, but uh, I think the key for us is going to have to keep our offense on the field and keep theirs off the field, so we're going to have to attack them and hold on to the ball and run the clock down. Ron Adams has always been an excellent passer, rated high in every category. High percentage of completions, uh, a low number of interceptions, uh, a great proficiency to get the ball into the end zone inside the 10-yard line, but over the last third of the season, he ended up being just a great running back, scoring five touchdowns in the last couple of games, some from as far out as 45 yards. We wondered how come Ron Adams had become such an explosive runner? Well, um, the defense has given us combination coverages, and they've turned their backs and ran with the receivers and double coverage, and I've been able to find a couple lanes and take off down the field and get some yardage to help the team out. And also, we've uh, switched our offense a little bit and running the wishbone a little bit more now, so I think that uh, has a little bit to do with me gaining the yardage on the ground. Under Jim Harkema's uh, offensive scheme of things, uh, it's really a multiple offense. You'll have a uh, back stacked in the eye. You've got a split backfield. You run out of the wishbone. Sometimes you're a drop back passer. Sometimes you're expected to be an option quarterback. How hard is it and how long does it take to be a quarterback at Eastern Michigan? 
Well, um, I don't think he does anything that's out, outside of my limitations. You know, he does what I'm capable of doing, you know, and that's that's a key. You can't get, get a quarterback in a position where he's doing things that he's not capable of. And right now I think Coach Harkman is doing the things that I do best. And, uh, you know, we're mixing it up pretty good, but we got a lot of talent offensively, and I think that's the key because the defense can uh, take care – take uh, – and attack you a certain way because we have so many options that we can give them. Well, Ron has indicated that we only ask him to do the things that uh, he's capable of doing, but he's capable of doing a lot of things, and uh, uh, we're very uh, blessed in that regard. And uh, the thing that we do ask Ronnie to do is, is uh, uh, within his capabilities in some regards because we control the situation, but uh, he's got a lot of talent. Oh, he certainly does. The other separator, Gary Patton, is the holder of every conceivable here on rushing record, most points scored, most touchdowns uh, in a game, most yards gained uh, on the ground. But you know, you're only as good as the people up front, the people that do the blocking. And we asked Gary about the group he affectionately calls his hogs. <laughs> uh, the guys up front, they mean a lot. They, uh, they're, um, they, they put out a lot for me, and uh, they, I think they put out a lot for this team. And, you know, the big guys in front is Evans and Klaus and Clissimo and Harley and, uh, and uh, Matt Klaus. They, you know, they, they do all right. I mean, they, they, they've come together as a unit, and they have a lot of pride among themselves as being called the Hogs. And, you know, they, they do a lot for each other. I think they, they, they watch each other's back a lot. So I think that they have that, that lineman unity among themselves, so I think that, that makes them one of the better, better linemen and better line in, a, in the conference. Well, as a little guy, a long time ago, I learned that if you're going to go into battle, it's nice to go into battle with some big guys. And uh, Gary's got some big guys up front, as he mentioned. Evans Hicks, over 300 pounds, 315 on a good day, and, and Harley and Klaus and Matt Klasa and all of them. Coach, uh, it's a thrill when you can accomplish what you and the staff and this ball club has accomplished. We ask Gary uh, what the championship and the birth in the California Bowl really means to Gary Patton. It means a lot to me personally. I, I've, I've been trying to get to this point ever since I stepped foot on Eastern Michigan's campus. And um, it just, it's a nice way to go out for me because I think I've worked hard enough and this whole team has worked hard enough to where we deserve this. You know, coming from, coming from where we were four years ago, being almost kicked out of here, and now um, we're on top of the Mac and everybody's shooting for us. And I think this is a real, real great tribute to Eastern Michigan and its athletes. You've had a chance to take a look at San Jose game film. Will they present any problems to you and, and the type of game you play that's different than what you've experienced in the Mid-American Conference? No, not really. They're, they're very aggressive, and I think that's a compliment to us because we, I think the harder, the better teams we play, the, the better we are. And I, I'm just looking forward to the challenge, and I think they're, they're going to be a real tough opponent. Well, Gary has reflected the hard work. I, I think that all football teams work hard, but I think they, this team has kept their focus on what they needed to do day by day and set the stage for the next success. And I think that's really been the key for this football team, that they, they can do their daily work so they can get prepared to win. Well, you, you keep bringing this ball club up to a new plateau, and now we get set to go to another plateau. Uh, your opponent, San Jose, the Spartans from out in California, and the California Bowl are something more than a fair to Midland ball club. It's a ball club that defeated Miami last year in the California Bowl 37-7. to This year already they've defeated a couple of the Pac-10 teams, the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, they defeated Stanford. They've gone undefeated again in the PCAA. Uh, what can you tell us about this ball club, San Jose? Well, I think San Jose is just a, a, a bona fide top 20 football team, and I think that uh, it's highlighted by their quarterback, Perez, who is uh, probably going to be one of the top three draftees in the NFL. But you can see him here uh, adjusting his feet. That's good fundamentals, and he got himself reset and then really hit that thing over the middle. So uh, he impresses me with his fundamentals just like Ron Adams does with his. But you see him kind of inch up and really move that ball in there. And they tell me he's just as tough as Ron Adams is. That's pretty tough. And the guy he likes to throw to is this Liggins who's got 70-some catches, and uh, he just made a great catch there of reaching up and, and then still trying to make the play. And they run him on the reverse here. Uh, they are a little loose with the football at times, and you'll see him right here as he's trying to gain an extra yard or two. He does fumble, but it's out of bounds. And on defense, they really blitz those linebackers. Number 50 is one of their leaders and uh, somebody that we're going to have to block. Uh, they really come after you with that Chicago Bears 46 defense.
defense. Coach, most of the people that we've talked to about San Jose State not only speak about the skill of a Perez, but they talk about the quickness, quickness both on offense and defense. This is a quick team. Well, they, I think that's the difference on the West Coast. They have a, an awful lot of good athletes, and good athletes can really run, and I think that's a thing that separates uh, them from uh, uh, the rest of their league, and it makes it a great challenge for us, and uh, we're, I think we're going to experience something that's a little new to our football team. Jim, the other day when we were at practice, we, we stopped by and talked with your defensive coordinator, a fellow who's been with you and on your staff for some 15 years, Greg Satansky, and we asked him what the keys were to shutting down the San Jose Spartan uh, offense. Uh, you may enjoy the smile on his face. As we look forward to Saturday's game of the Cal Bowl, uh, what are the keys defensively to shut down this potent San Jose attack? Well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, they've got a lot of firepower, and uh, they're probably, I think without a doubt they're the best football team that, we, that we're going to play this year. Uh, obviously, their uh, their receiver Liggins is uh, uh, really makes big plays. Their quarterback uh, uh, Perez he he makes big plays. But they've got a lot of other uh, fellows who are uh, uh, key people. Obviously, we can't uh, we 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 don't feel that uh, we can allow uh, San Jose to run the football against us. And at the same time, uh, we've we've got to. Uh, uh, make some plays against uh, uh, the, their receivers and their quarterback and in uh, uh, hopefully that uh, if we can con if we can control them somewhat then uh, and maybe force a turnover or two of the offense can uh, uh, have a chance to uh, you know to uh, uh, show show us what they've done all year which is you know get the ball in the end zone you may want to add to that. Now. <laughs> is, is there a way to shut down San Jose State, and, uh, and, and, and how confident do you feel about moving the ball on, on the Spartans? Well, I think the key is, number one, as Greg said, that we need to stop the run, and we must prevent the long pass. But at the same time, we'll help our defense if we can possess the football, and I think that's really crucial when you play a high-powered offense uh, such as San Jose's. So I'd say that uh, those are the three keys, and uh, uh, he's right on in what need, they need to do, but I think offensively we need to help them a great deal. We have a couple of other things coming up here. We're going to talk to some of the players on San Jose, and you know the California Bowl is not your ordinary holiday bowl. Uh, sure, it's a, it's a football game uh, uh, between the champions of the Pacific Coast Athletic Conference, conference and uh, the Mid-American Conference, it's a reward, but it's more than a football game. It's more than a happening for the alumni of the two schools and the people that live in Fresno. It's got a real human element to it, and we'll take a look at that too when we return. Probably like we did UOP game, they're going to have to change up something. They run the wishbone, I guess. I haven't even seen anything on them. They're just kind of just a three, three yards in a cloud of dust team. And once they start getting down by a couple of touchdowns, they're going to have to change that up. So we, I, they're not going to present any surprises for us. A lot of teams, you know, try to throw in something different and then it doesn't work. Then they go back to what works and we stop that. So they're going to have to, we're going to make them change up what, they're, what they normally do. And that will be to our advantage. As soon as they get out of what they normally do, then we'll have more one of them. I haven't really seen Eastern Michigan on film. I saw him play against Toledo on ESPN. It seemed like a blitzing defense in certain ways, but talking with Coach Henson, they blitz, but they still play zone behind it. So we're sort of looking at a similar team to Miami of Ohio from last year. Is that a weird combination? It is. We haven't seen nothing like that out here in our uh, conference. It's, yeah. Uncommon, I think maybe the better athletes with defensive back on the PC2A than maybe they have yeah. in their conference. So I think that would be one of the reasons. Well, um, we heard that they're a pretty tough team. I haven't seen any films on them or anything lately, but um, um, we're going to go in there knowing that they're going to come after us. So we're going to go in there really fired up, ready to play, and we really want to go, go out and win this one big yeah. so that would sort of get everybody looking at San Jose State. Some talk, I guess, I hear this, that they were, there was some talk about maybe them uh, dropping out of the Mid-American Conference and doing what they could to survive because they were not winning and they weren't drawing uh, people to the game and uh, and so they've gone through a very dramatic resurgence here the last couple of years and uh, culminating with their great season this year nine and two and uh, winning the championship and so I understand they tore the goalpost down in their last game when they won the championship and realized they were coming to the California Bowl. So it's big to them. It's very exciting and uh, and they're very very up 
about it and uh, certainly looking forward to the trip and I'm sure looking forward to the game and so uh, I think there'll be a team that uh, that's that's very high on a on a on a on a positive kind of a note and they'll be greatly enthused and I think very hungry so uh, I think they're going to be a, a very tough team to beat. Well Jim the California Bowl activities actually begin long before the teams arrive and it's a whole week of activities. I know you've had a chance to go out to the California Bowl uh, without the team in the past as a spectator <laughs> yes. where you could really sit back and enjoy it. Uh, tell us about some of these uh, activities that the players will be experiencing. Well, I think it's highlighted by uh, the beginning when they have the queen in, in her court and they actually uh, act as the official hosts of the program and, and just do a great job. Uh, young gals that are really uh, very gregarious and, and really do an excellent job of taking care of people. This Malibu Grand Prix, uh, one of my staff members was on the Northern Illinois staff and he said this is going to be the highlight of our trip and uh, I, I think he wants to beat me in one of those cars is what's going to be the, the situation, but uh, we'll see who can drive the best and and do uh, do the thing uh, on that course I, it's going to be exciting but uh, uh, I, I just hope our players can handle it <laughs> the uh, the trip to Yosemite I guess is rather a long trip from Fresno but they say it's one of the most enjoyable things that you can do and really experience uh, the beauty and the, and the just uh, just the kind of an overwhelming feeling there when you go to that uh, uh, park the buddy program probably is the highlight. The, all the former teams and players have told me that uh, when you meet these kids and, and really experience them, it, it just uh, uh, makes the football game seem kind of uh, secondary. And then there's the great tribute before the ball game. I, I don't know if they'll do it again, but both teams will carry their buddies out with them onto the field for the coin flip. And I would guess that there'll be few tears in the, uh, in the eyes of the players, and I know there'll be tears in my eyes if they do carry that kind of program out. Uh, I think they do some other interesting things. Uh, uh, one of them, uh, I, I'd like to enter this. I'm, I'm an ice cream <laughs> fan myself, and uh, I don't know if I can eat it as fast as these players and young kids, but uh, uh, I think that'll be another treat for everybody uh, that's involved uh, in it. Uh, I think one other thing that's in there that we might not see in this tape is a, is a great uh, uh, banquet that's put on, but then they have this pep rally uh, just prior to the football game that's very exciting. Uh, uh, for everybody involved out there. Well, Jim, uh, we've got some highlights of last year's California Bowl. Uh, San Jose State, a 37-7 winner over the Redskins of Miami with their all-star quarterback, number 11, Mike Perez. And there is his outstanding receiver, number 83, Liggins. San Jose State has been one of the most improved teams of the nation over the course of the past two seasons, and uh, much of it is that uh, passing combination, 11-83, Perez to Liggins. Now here you'll see the outstanding dance in the end zone. He's gone Malalulu, the receiver from the West Coast. But again, right after that, Perez uh, comes right back uh, for an encore again into the end zone uh, to Liggins, and Liggins will be there on Saturday afternoon. And there's no question about who the MVP was a year ago. It was number 11, Mike Perez. The final score of that ball game was uh, San Jose State 37 and uh, the Miami Redskins 7. But Jim, we've got a lot of confidence that the outcome is going to be different here uh, in 1987. Confidence that the Road Warriors, who have been able to win four out of five games away from Rynearson Stadium, will be able to do it again, this time on the West Coast in the California Bowl in Fresno. Well, Jim, that'll about do it. Uh, we thank you so much for being with us. Uh, congratulations to you and uh, the excellent staff that you have and to the ball club. You'll be commended for the, the accomplishments of this past year. And best wishes to you and the team as you uh, represent the university and the Mid-American Conference in the California Bowl. Well, John, we're very pleased that we could represent Ypsilanti, Eastern Michigan University, and, and really ourselves and our football program. We're looking forward to our trip out to uh, California. Thank you very much. Jim Harkema, head coach of Eastern Michigan University's Winning Hurons. The Huron Football Show has been sponsored in part by Great Lakes Bank Corp., your partner in life, and by the General Motors family in Ypsilanti, VOC Assembly, Service Parts Division, and Hydromatic Division.
Columbia Bowl. in Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California for the 1987 California Bowl. Today, the Mid-American Conference champion Eastern Michigan Hurons meet the Pacific Coast Athletic Association champs, the San Jose State Spartans. Today's game is being brought to you by Michelob and by the Fresno Convention and Visitors Bureau and by Buick and your Buick dealer, the Great American Road, belongs to Buick and by Delta Airlines. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Papa. Today's the day for football wives and girlfriends to run for cover. The college football bowl season begins, this being the first of 18 to come away. But it is a bit unique. It is one of only two in the country that locks both schools in through conference affiliation, of course, the other being the Rose Bowl. Let me bring in my partner, Stan White, Ohio State linebacker, who unfortunately knows all about the Rose Bowl. Stan, this game, in more ways than just that, is similar to a Rose Bowl. Well, sure it is. It's a contrast of styles. The Midwestern teams that like to run the football against the pass happy California teams. And sadly to say, from my standpoint, the California teams have had their ways in both bowl games the past several years. You can see Eastern Michigan, 60% of their offense on the ground, San Jose State, nearly three quarters of their yardage in the air. Now, Eastern Michigan's numbers may even be more dramatic today, Stan. They feel they have to run the ball against that Spartan attack in 46 defense. And they have the guys that can run the football. Ron Adams is able to run the option as well as to scramble from aborted pass attempts. And, of course, they have Gary Patton, who's gained 1,000 yards in both the last two seasons, all MAC, both years. He'll get the ball a lot today. And the reason they want to run is to keep it away from the Spartan offense. Mike Perez to Guy Liggins, a deadly duo. Well, Mike Perez, second in total offense in the country this year. Guy Liggins, second in receptions. They can go long. They can go short. I'm sure we'll see that combination time and time again today. All right. That's what Stan and I think. Now let's find out uh, from two guys who really have an opinion, the two head coaches. We have to play to the, to the very top of our, of our ability. Uh, San Jose is truly a, a, a top 20 football team. And I think Perez and Liggins and some of those kids even take them a notch up. And, and that's uh, that's what we think in our in our conference that Ron Adams and Gary Patton do for us is take us a little notch up. But it's, we haven't proven to ourselves or anybody that we can play Pac-10 or Big Ten football teams. And, and uh, so we have to play to that level. Uh, we'd like to believe we can. And so I think that's the key is that we have to play to the very top of it and prove to ourselves and everybody else that we can play that caliber of football. I know these guys are good. They're a good football team. They're well coached. They have more speed than, you know, I think the typical team back there. And uh, they can do it well, both running and passing, and they play awfully good defense. So I, I think it's going to be a good matchup. Well, it, well, it should be. AP has the Spartans 24th in the country, Eastern Michigan 27th. Kickoff is next, Eastern Michigan and San Jose State. The college football bowl season is set to begin. San Jose State at 10-1, champions of the PCAA to kick off to Eastern Michigan. 9-2, the champs of the Mid-American Conference. Sergio Alavarez kicks off for underway from Fresno. Leonard Smith, number nine, from his 10-yard line. And he has a hole, a huge hole. Alavarez is the only guy that can bring him down. He breaks that, and now he's shoved out with the help from Jay Taylor. As Taylor's a great... Quick defensive back, 47-yard kick return for Glenard Smith, who averages only 20 of all games. So Ron Adams and the Hurons have great field position. Adams starting his 22nd consecutive game as the Huron quarterback, Cole most valuable player, along with their tailback Gary Pat. Big play has the Hurons on the Spartan 42 stand. It sure does, and that's what they need. Big plays win football games. We see something new right away. If it's a wishbone, Greg, they're going to try to establish that running game. They go to the bone, something they have done inside the opponent's 20, but they do it to begin the ball game, trying to throw this Spartan 46 defense off balance. 
And they pitch to Bob Foster, the tailback. He is dropped there by Greg Cox, along with Yepi Pa'u'u. There's Pa'u'u. They call him a Tongan hitman, second leading tackler on this Spartan club. Offensive backs for the Hurons, Chuck Nash, Gary Patton, and also Bob Foster on as they go to the wishbone. Ostrander and Ziegler, two good route runners. Offensive line is big. Evan Hicks goes 325, and Brian Klaus next one of the best two linemen the Hurons have. They play on the right side. They go to the wishbone again. First down, brought no yardage. Second and 10. Adams, a fifth year senior from Taylor, Michigan. And he pitches to Gary Patton. And he shoved that about by Phil Fresh, a senior left cornerback from Bakersfield for the San Jose State Spartan defense. They throw, play a three-man line of this 46. Hutcherson, Guthrie, and Pukini. The linebackers, the strength. The two inside guys are exceptional. Barry Kidney and Yepi Pa'u'u. The DBs are led by number seven, Jay Taylor, who saved possibly a kick return touchdown. He's very quick, and Greg Cox is a monster in the secondary playing rover back, a ferocious hitter. They have a third down at five coming up. Patton picked up five. They stay in the wishbone. Nash with Foster and Patton behind. What about Adams? They jump off sides. Tim Wells does. Flags go down. Foster fumbles the football, and Jay Taylor has it for San Jose State. But they jumped off sides. The question now, were they drawn, or did they jump on his own? Uh, no, I think he jumped on. He went on sound, tried to make that big third down play defensively. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen right there. He's on the ground, obviously, when the ball is snapped. He knows he has a free play here, so he makes a, a, a ill-advised pitch a little too close to him, hits him right on the shoulder pad and goes down. But it'll be enough for a first down. It was just a little less than five on third down. That's a backbreaker for San Jose State. Offside against the defense. It's exactly what, uh, what Jim Harkeman wants, though. Make those third down plays because he's got to keep the football. Eugene Wirtz, our referee, and all of these officials come from the Western Athletic Conference, which, like the PCAA, is a passing conference. Stand of the MAC is a run conference. Would that have any factor favoring San Jose State, do you feel? Well, you never know what uh, some built-in biases or prejudice we all have. You never know how it's going to be. Obviously, the off on the West Coast, uh, uh, hopefully, though, sometimes it works both ways. Sometimes they overcalled against the team you would think they'd be for. Well, Tim Wells' mistake has the Hurons at first and 10 from the Spartan 32. Here's Bob Foster. He's inside the 30, and he's dropped at about the 28. Phil Frash again stepped up to make the play. He is their sixth top tackler on a couple of interceptions, bringing down Bob Foster. One. Well, Go ahead, Stan. One thing this wishbone does, it gets both Patton and Foster into the game. Two excellent running backs. You know, they've been alternating quite a bit this year. And you don't lose a whole lot with Foster. Almost had 500 yards on his own in a backup role. He'll be their main man next year as Patton is a senior. Second and six. And for the first time, the handoff of the fullback. Chuck Nash, the freshman ball carrier. He was brought down by Yepi Pa'u'u. Nash is starting again this week. He is forced to play since week five when Steve Palmatier, their top fullback, went down in week five with a knee injury. And Nash is a true freshman and a walk-on. What a great story there. That is a story. A kid that uh, moved to Georgia his senior year, didn't like it down there, quit, didn't even play football, came back, and all of a sudden now he's starting in the Cal Bowl just a year later. Well, they break the bone here on third and three. Go to the I formation, two wide receiver alignment. Adams' first pass of the game. It's a dump to Foster. Or pardon me, to Patton. He has the first down, and he's out across the 20-yard line. Patton is a good receiver. Didn't use him as much receiving this year as last year. 15 this year, last year, 37. It goes down as a pass, but really it's not more than a toss. Just a delayed action on the toss. He gets a blocker out in front of Patton more than just a running play with a quarterback throwing the ball overhand. Brian Rasnick shoved Patton out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. <laughs> quarterback keeps it inside the 15. Adams down to the 11-yard line. Brian Rasnick again makes the tackle and Stan 
So far, the wishbone attack has worked exactly the way Jim Harkema, the Eastern Michigan coach, had this thing diagrammed. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. It's exactly what he wants. To use up as much time as he can, keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock running, and still score some points. And pick up positive yardage on first down. You don't want to get into a second and ten, a second and nine against the Spartan defense with the blitzing. They can come with the two backers, then you're in trouble. Exactly. Now they have a second and one. Ideal. They stay to the bone. And they have off the fullback, Nash. He crossed the 10 that he was shoved back. We'll see where they spot it. I think he has the first down at the nine yard line where Yepi, Pa'u'u, and Greg Cox make the tackle. I tell you, Greg, they're at the toughest place in, on the football field right now to score from the nine yard line. You've got to get all the way into the end zone. Uh, you'd much rather have a chance to get a first down inside the 10. Now they've got to go all the way. This first down play is very important on whether they'll get a touchdown out of this or try to uh, have to end up trying a field goal. Now, this was the point on the field where during the regular season, Eastern Michigan went to the wishbone inside the 20, and they were very successful with it. Now they're inside the 10. And they face the first and goal from the nine. Nash with Patton and Foster behind. That's Bob Foster, and he picks up good yardage on first down inside the five before Greg Cox stepped up along with Ferry Kidney. Excellent power football off the wishbone. It's not an option. This is just a power play. You give it to the off halfback with the other two backs leading you through. They just blew back that uh, defensive line of San Jose State. Now, obviously, these guys aren't that big up front. No. You're talking about 248, 236, 233. In fact, they call themselves the Ant Patrol because of their size. That's part of the reason Harkema went to the wishbone figuring his team could beat him up. Here's Patton, and he shoves himself down near the goal line. I believe he's just shy of the goal line. That'll bring up a third down. Yepi pa -oo. It's and just, Mike Hutcherson make the tackle. Just flipping it over the other side. Again, just power football. Watch him just carry Pau'u, the Tongan hitman. It looks like he scored from that angle, but the official said that he bounced into the end zone. They got the ball just about a foot short of the goal line. Here his helmet got across, but of course the ball does have to go across. Jim Harkema, near unanimous MAC coach of the year. Faces a third down and one. We've played 5-10, and his team has had the ball the whole while. One of the Spartans may have jumped. No flag down. Now a flag is thrown. And they did not say he got in. They held him. San Jose State held. But again, flags are down. And they say there might even have been a fumble. They're, they're celebrating like they recovered a fumble, but I think it was an obvious offsides on San Jose. They're coming out there. Pau is coming out with a football, but I think they're going to call it back. You're right. David Knox stuck his helmet in there, but it's going to be disallowed. Offsides again against San Jose State. Now, the Spartans, far and away this year, the most penalized team in college football. 133 penalties stand for 999 yards. That is quite a bit. Claude Gilbert's not real upset with that because it is part of the aggression on defense. They have offside against the defense, half the distance, still third down. Well, this is one of the 1,000-yard barriers you don't like to cross because they're over 1,000 right. now in, uh, in penalty yardage. Plus, it gives them another play to score on. They did get the football on the fumble that game. He doesn't mind the aggressive penalties, but certainly two offsides. Those aren't, yeah, not in this situation. Yeah, that's going to kill him. First and goal. Actually, third and goal from the one. That's Bob Foster hurdling up. And there's the signal. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. It took him two thrusts to get in. They had him stopped in the first thrust. You'll watch and you'll see it's the second thrust that gets him in. It's just this basic power play. Right there, he stopped. Now watch the second thrust oh, right yeah. there. It gets him into the end zone. He wanted to score, and he got the ball in, and that gives Eastern Michigan the lead in this game, and that's important for them to get that lead. See right there, he stopped. Now watch his second lunge right there. Okay, gets in the end zone. They're on the board first. They need to establish the ground game first. They did. They need to get a lead. They did. Now it's up to their defense to do something. Tim Hennigan, who was at 31 of 34 extra points, is on. Quite a first series for Eastern Michigan. Big kick return. They drive 42 yards and score on a one-yard dive. 9.39 to play. First quarter. It is the Huron 7 and the Spartans nothing.
Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by the number one ski boot in the world, Nordica, reach a new high. And by the American Express card. Membership has its privileges. Don't leave home without it. Greg Papa, Stan White, Bulldog Stadium. Fresno, California, and the Eastern Michigan Hurons, a most successful first five and a half minutes of play as they go in, cap off a 42-yard, 10-play drive, which chewed up 5-21 and leads 7-0. Now, coming into the ballgame, Stan, San Jose State was a heavy favorite. Some lines I read as much as 17 points for the Hurons to score that way on their first drive. What a big confidence boost. Oh, it has to be a great confidence boost. They've watched films of these guys going up and down the field, manhandling teams. you got to say, geez, how good are these guys? For them to get this early score tells them they can do something against this football team. Maybe they didn't think they could until that. Eastern Michigan has two kickers. You saw Hennigan earlier. This guy, John Lump, is their long kicker. Dropping back deep is James Saxon, but he won't have it. It's a short kick. It'll be taken by one of the up people. This is Donald Stewart, a backup fullback, and he's out to the 31-yard line, where the Spartans down 7-0, come on the field, led by senior quarterback Mike Perez. He has set 15 San Jose State school records, number two in the country in total offense, number 14 in passing efficiency. He could be the top quarterback chosen in the NFL draft this spring, Stan. Well, he has all the statistics, that's for sure, and he has all the capabilities, the size, the arm, very well could be. Play action pass, Perez to throw. He has all day firing down the middle, cut for a first down. That's Guy Liggins. No, it was, what are they saying now? Was the ball taken away? Tom Menard stepped up there. It appeared to go over the middle for a completion, and they are going to say the ball remains in possession of San Jose State. Let's check this one out again. Yeah, let's see. The ball did pop out. Did it pop out before he hit the ground? We'll see, got plenty of good pass protection here. See the linebackers drawn up. Now, they don't get quite deep enough. He gets so much time. He just meant plenty of time to pick out Liggins. The ball's right there. Now, the ball looks like it was started to come out before he hit the ground, but the referee called it down. We did see the ball hit the ground before his actual body hit the ground. It's hard to tell where his knees were, though. Offensive line gave him great protection first series. Mike Bernard is the best of the people up front, certainly a pro prospect. They move Liggins in motion. And they hand off to Kenny Jackson. Big hole. Breaks it 45-40. And he's pushed out by Jerry Smith at the 30-yard line of Eastern Michigan. 25-yard pickup. So San Jose State stands showing off their diversity. First play of the game goes 15 to the pass, then a 25-yard run. Well, Offensive line for Eastern Michigan. Four-man front. Eric Miller, the top sacker. Linebackers, Keith Bertram is their leading tackler on the ball club. Dan Bennett is a freshman quarter. Maybe a point of attack. Also, Charles Gordon back there. He's the best defensive player they have. But he missed the, the tackle on that last play that gave an extra 15 yards. First and 10, Spartans trying to tie the game. They pitch to Kenny Jackson again. Short side of the field, picks up three. Kenny Jackson, a senior out of San Mateo, California. Last year, ran for over 1,100 yards this year. Only 818 because the guy in your picture right there, number 20, James Saxon, became more a factor in the Spartan attack. That's what they say. They say Kenny Jackson didn't play any less this year. He just didn't have to carry the load as much with James Saxon. In fact, last year, Jackson became only the fifth NCAA player to rush for over 1,000 yards and catch 50 passes in the same season. Yeah, and San Jose State is at two of them. Gerald Wilhite also did it. Second down play action, Perez to throw. And he throws behind James Saxon. Coverage there by outside linebacker Anthony Johnson. That'll bring up a third down and seven for Mike Perez. Well, that's the favorite play action pattern right there. Uh, Eastern Michigan has been working on defending that pattern all week long. They like to hit Liggins in the slot off the play action, clear out and bring him right through the slot in the, down the sideline. Jim Harkham has been working on it all week long, and the, the uh, defense recognized it and stopped it that time. San Jose State now employs three wide receivers. Liggins in motion with McLeod and Kenny Roberts out there. Third and seven over the middle, wide open. It's caught by the tight end. Clump, he's inside the 10. And he's down to the nine before Charles Gordon and Tom Menard bring him down. 19-yard pickups, then. This thing breaks wide open over the middle. Well, nobody takes him. They're so uh, uh, 
gone on Liggins trying to stop him. They forget the tight end, and he leads this team in yards per catch with 19.3. You got to cover everybody. Somebody made a mistake here because he's running down the field free. And Perez, as smart as he is, the way he can read, he'll pick that up right away. He likes his tight end. Clump caught 20 this year, most in San Jose State, four years with a tight end. Here's Kenny Jackson down to about the six yard line. You can't become over enamored with the guy Liggins because the other guys can burn you too. Just a power run right here by Kenny Jackson. Almost busted. Just get him by the leg and stop him at the six yard line. Mike Burns, Keith Bertram on the tackle. These two teams obviously strong defensive outfits, but they're known for their offense. San Jose State, sixth best scoring team in the country, 35.5 of all game. And all offense so far. There's Kenny Jackson again. Touchdown as that opened up wide through the middle. How often does a guy run in from the six up the middle and go in virtually untouched? That's one thing defensively is a sin. You never let the ball carrier go into the end zone standing up. He's going to score, make him pay for it. But just a counter play. You see both linemen pulling around. Good blocks. And again, it just opens wide up. The linebackers overreacted on the first uh, step by the backs and were in great position to be blocked and cut off from the pursuit angles. Kenny Jackson was hurt in last year's California Bowl, making up for it this year. Off to a great start. Four carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Alvarez for the extra point. It's straight up and good. So San Jose State answers back quickly, going 70 yards in less than two and a half minutes, and they tie the ball game. 7-19 to play. First quarter, each team has a touchdown. Well, San Jose State was at its best on their opening possession. Took them only 220 to go 70 yards, and Kenny Jackson scored the touchdown. He now has 17 touchdowns this year, a school record for touchdowns. Alavarez to kick off again. 7-7. Seven, seven. So Eastern Michigan does so well in their first possession stand, but then their defense really was... Uh, non-existent on that first series and gives it all back. Well, Jim Harkeman knew they'd get the yardage, but what he didn't want them to do is be able to strike quickly, and they did. Two minutes and 20 seconds, the worst part of that stat, because that means all the work that uh, Eastern did went down the drain quickly. Alavarez kicks off again. Glenard Smith with a big return to open the ball game, and this time he's hemmed in and dropped before he makes the 20. He's put down at the 16-yard line. Well, here's much better special teams coverage for San Jose State. I'm sure their special teams coach on the sidelines said, don't get us in the hole again. They get down there quick. That's always the goal. They give special bonus points for getting the returner inside the 20. Leonard Smith just did not get the ball quickly enough to stay close enough to his wedge. The wedge got in front of him, and once they busted through it, it was easy play. David Knox made the tackle. They began their first series with Spartan 42, their second series on their own. 17. That's Gary Patton. Pulled down by Mike Hutcherson. Hutcherson, a great second half of this year as he made honorable mention All American. Or, pardon me, honorable mention uh, All PCAA. Short gain brings up second down. Spartan 46 defense. Outstanding rush defense. Third best in the country. They give up only about 84 a ball game yards. And that's what we talked about. You don't want second down and nine because now they get out of that wishbone. They have to go to an offense they'd rather not run. They'd rather keep the ball on the ground out of the wishbone. They're out of the wishbone now. They hand off the tailback. Patton again. Out across the 23, about the 24-yard line before. Greg Cox makes the tackle on Patton. Last two years, he has rushed for over 1,000 yards. This year, 1,112, third best in the Mac. The Mac had four ball carriers this year, over a thousand. That was close. That was the old sprint draw, and he got past the first wave. He just got uh, tripped up just a little bit where he couldn't make the open field move on Cox. If he could have had a little bit of more footing, he might have been able to get by that one tackler. He had a lot of yards to go. Third and five. Adam's second pass of the game. Again, like the first to dump off. And they're not going to pick up anything on this one, though. Tim Wells stepped up and made the play. A flag is thrown, though, on the snap. It looks like it's in the area where the uh, other, now the Eastern Michigan's cheering, so it must be on San Jose State. I should have waited. Usually when the, the uh, flag is thrown 
behind, and uh, Claude Gilbert doesn't know wants to know what's going on. It's usually offensive holding. It's defensive holding called on San Jose State. Very rare penalty on a run play, but the Spartans uh, pick up their third penalty, all coming on defense. Holding by the defense, ten-yard penalty, first down. Well, that uh, you know that's not uh, something that's not done a lot. When you stunt a lot. Now, linemen like to grab two guys and hold them so the guy can loop around exactly. him and come free. That's probably what happened. That's why the holding call. You don't get it called very much. That's why so many people do it, especially in pro ball. Well, Claude Gilbert's almost gotten used to his defense taking a lot of penalties. Five and a half to play. First quarter, they picked up three costly penalties on defense. Adams keeps himself on the bone, and he's on across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Bill Flash again steps up to make the tackle. Adams has a strong arm. We've not seen him throw yet, but uh, he's a very, obviously, a very strong runner. Yeah, penalties have uh, made a big part in this game already, Greg, as you've talked about. Just letting them keep the football right there on third down. When you're getting the ball back, you never want to commit a penalty that allow the other team to keep the football, uh, especially with an explosive offense behind you. That defense has got one third down. they got to get the ball. Adams, the third leading rusher on the ball club behind Patton and Foster. Here's Patton. And he has the first down to the 44-yard line, running up the middle. I think this is good strategy by Jim Harkerman to put this wishbone in. It's been so good to him all year long inside the 20-yard line. And uh, he also had some film on San Jose State playing against the University of Pacific. Now, Pacific didn't do that well, but uh, Jim Harkerman felt his wishbone was much better as far as the personnel was concerned and some of the things that they saw on the film they thought they could do yes. against San Jose State today. The final score was San Jose State 42 Pacific 17 but Harkema and his coaching staff thought that uh, Pacific would not execute very well on their wishbone that some things were there for them. Here's the pitch to Patton again running wide and Kidney strings it out and throws him down inbounds for no gain. Well, they got what they wanted. That was just a good play by Kidney, good speed. You didn't slow him down. Uh, the wishbone is predicated on the inside fake or the first man slowing down the pursuit. That's what makes it work. On a pitch play, defensively, you know, heck, I can sprint to the sideline. I know he's got the ball. But when you're faking and you're delaying your linebackers, it's tougher to get to the outside on a play around the corner. That time, nothing stopped Barry Kidney. He made the play on pursuit. Gary Patton never been to California before this week and it was a chilly 40 degrees in Fresno today. Adams on the keeper breaks some tackles has the first down and he fights his way to the 40 of San Jose State and also Harkema told uh, both you and I stand yesterday that if it doesn't work at least Adams is a tough quarterback he'll make it work well Harry look what he does see the man right there 49 has the quarterback on the option all he does is follow his fullback he uses him as a shield as a blocker and cuts up the field before the man with the responsibility for the quarterback on the option can take him he's waiting for him but he cuts up in the line before he even get out to him that's just a good heads-up play, a good read by Ron Adams. Jay Taylor finally pulled him down, 16-yard pickup. Adams has now rushed three times for 33 yards. First and 10 from the Spartan 40. They hand off to Gary Patton, running right, gets the outside. And he's down to the 23-yard line for a 17-yard pickup before Greg Cox shoves him out of bounds. And Patton is obviously pumped up. Well, this whole Eastern Michigan team is, again, just a simple power handoff. They're just blowing out the line. Watch it. They're blowing these people back. Look at that hole he goes through. He's not even touched. He loves to bounce to the outside. They should know that. Cornerback there, she's got to stay outside. Rasnick, you see, he's got to play. He's got to stay out there. He's coming up. He's got contained. If he lets him get outside right there, that's what Patton wants, and he took it. Fresh also helped out Cox. First and 10. They say he's out of the 25 yard line. Here's Chuck Nash, the freshman fullback for a short gain. That'll bring up a second and nine. What a sensational year for the Eastern Michigan Hurons at nine and two, their best year ever in their football history. Here's a good play defensively. He's, he's right there, stunt right into the play defensively. But again, you accomplish something on that play. You make them know that you can hand the ball off up the middle, which delays people on the outside plays if they really respect you as far as running inside. And Eastern Michigan, Stan, is keeping the ball away from the Spartans. This thing's going exactly according to plan. Here's the pitch to Jimmy Johnson. 
And he's shoved down at the 25 yard line. And Jim Harkema, the head coach of the Eastern Michigan Hurons, is going nuts on the sideline. Well, he's he mad at was Bob. A mask, a face mask. No, he's mad at Bob Foster. He's screaming at him. He had exactly what he wanted. He had the pitch man with a blocker in front of him. But Bob Foster didn't make the block. If all he has to do is cut down there. Watch now. Watch the outside. You got the. There's Foster leading Jimmy Johnson around the corner. We see him miss the block right there. He had that man perfect position to make the block. He just didn't make it. Tim Wells made the play, but uh, he should have been blocked easily by Foster. Well, you're exactly right. Harkimer really laid into Foster when he came off the field. Third and ten. Lock stops with 2.06 to play. First quarter, we're tied at seven. There was some confusion on defense, and they called a timeout. Adams saw that. He tried to get the snap off before they could get the timeout because he, he knew there was confusion. And the uh, clock was also winding down, so... Adams calls our first time out of the ball game with 2.05 to play. We have played 12 minutes and 55 seconds of this football game, and San Jose State has had it 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So Eastern Michigan, the wishbone is doing it to Claude Gilbert Spartans, keeping the hand, the football out of the arms of uh, Perez. But now it's a big third down and 10. They do not go to the wishbone. They bring two backs in, one of the slot back, and they have two wide receivers, Ziegler and Ostrander. Move Nash in motion. Adams throws. No catch. No catch. Well, look good from here. I'll tell you that. There's a flag down in the field, though. A couple of flags. Mark Ziegler, the intended receiver, number 83, their top receiver with 24 this year. Let's see if we can see it. Here's the ball. See if we can see it gets his arms under it or not. It's hard to see. We're being blocked out by Jim Taylor, the corner on the play. Maybe this angle we'll be able to see. Just a rollout, well-executed play against the blitz. He comes away from it. Now, does he get the ball? Looks like a no, catch to looks... me. I think it looks like a catch, Greg. I think it definitely does from that angle. The I got holding violations holding. Against the offense. I have a roughing the passer. Ooh. Against the defense. The penalty's offset. Repeat the down, third down. Well, once again, the San Jose State defense is their own worst enemy. Yeah, you don't see uh, too many roughing the passer penalties called number one in college and number two on a rollout yeah, with really. a rollout quarterback that can run the football. Well, third and ten comes again. This time. They have picked up 80 of their 85 yards the Hurons have on the ground. Well, that's on the wishbone. It's broken up by Greg Cox. It was a screen pass. They just uh, tackled the screen man. He never got out there. He kept looking for him. The, the Adams was being pressured, just had to throw it in the general direction. Luckily, one of the linemen didn't pick it off for San Jose State. It was a middle screen. Well, the closest guy to catching the ball for the Hurons was uh, Jim Colissimo, the <laughs> junior guard. So now we have a field goal attempt coming up, 42 yards for Tim Hennigan, who takes them all inside the 50. And he's had a great year, as you see there. He's made 9 of 10. And as long this year, 41 yards out of the hole of quarterback Adams. And it's long enough. It's right down the middle. So Eastern Michigan has scored on their first two possessions. 42-yard field goal puts them up by three with 151 to play in the first quarter. Well, the past three years, the California Bowl has been dominated by the PCAA. Last year, the Spartans beat Miami of Ohio 37 to 7. The year before that, Fresno State buried Bowling Green 51 to 7. The year before that, Nevada Las Vegas over Toledo 30 to 13 stand. But early in this game, Eastern Michigan has the upper hand. They look solid. Well, they've kept the football, and that's what they want to do. Now they'll see it's the defense's turn now. They didn't do too good to let in the score in two minutes and 20 seconds. They got to pick it up. John Love will kick off again. But again, he goes very short. Donald Stewart, second return from his 15. And he's hit in the open field by Anthony Johnson, a freshman linebacker. 
And I tell you what, it's a good thing Anthony Johnson <laughs> made the tackle. There's a huge hole in the middle of this uh, special teams unit, but he just can't get to it. Uh, Anthony Johnson came down untouched and made the play. You can see this hole right here. He just goes right between. Gee, somebody, they're going to get yelled out there. You Jackson cannot let do people, much blocking. You could not let people run between the wedge. That's the wedge's responsibility. You're better off having two on one guy than nobody. And the reason the Hurons are kicking short, James Sachs in the 10th best kick returner in the country. Here's Mike Perez. Flushed. And for the 14th time this year, he is sacked. Mike Burns in there along with Bronco Vincing. Just good coverage this time. The linebackers stayed back. It's a good same play action out of eye. He's looking over the middle. Just can't get there. Eric Miller is the first man to put pressure on. Vincent cleans up on him. I tell you what, uh, only uh, 14 sacks now this yeah. year. Uh, but a lot of it, and I've watched some film on him, is because Mike Perez is strong. He avoids the oh, rush. Yeah. He's completed two passes left-handed while they're hanging on his side. Oh, that bench press is stand 350 pounds. They flare to Saxon right side. He dodges a couple of people and gets back to the line of scrimmage. But still, that'll bring up a third down and 14. They hark him as like a cheerleader on the sideline. That guy is, <laughs> he gets more excited than any of the players do. He's jumping up and down. This is a big play defensively. You got him in third and long. You drop back now nine ten yards let it catch in front of you go up and make the tackle Harkema said the key to this game will be how many yards they make after they catch the ball we're going to yeah. give them the stuff in front of us but if we can go up and make the tackle on them then we think we can at least slow them down well, Jim Harkema wouldn't be a human being if he's not jumping around inside now what a performance by his team early price over the middle throws complete to William McLeod but he is short of the first down well short yep coverage there by the linebacker Keith Bertram to drop back so the Spartans stall on their second series and that should be maybe the last play of the quarter we have nine seconds eight seconds we'll see if Deal will get it off in time the wind is behind him he'd like to get advantage of the wind and you better hurry up and snap it here too they didn't do it no nope. looked like they were mistake. intentionally rushing out there to get it off with the wind behind him and then he didn't call hike in time first quarter very surprisingly Eastern Michigan leads by three after the first 15. The Kent State Museum. The two key stats to look at there, Eastern Michigan's rushing total, 80. Time of possession, staggering. Eastern Michigan, 1141 to 419. That's one way to slow down Perez. Don't give him the football. Tom Beal into punt. The best way. That's the best way. <laughs> good defense starts with good offense, right? Deal had a bad year this year. Gets the kick away. Charles Gordon, number one. Let's it bounce, then backs away. And Eastern Michigan's third possession will begin at about their 36-yard line, following a 35-yard punt from Deal. Last year, he averaged almost 41 a kick. Second team All-PCAA this year. He had the worst average in the conference at 38.5. Yeah, Greg, uh, San Jose State's ranked third in the country against the run. But I think that's a, a deceptive statistic because when ahead. you're 10 and 1, obviously yeah. you've been ahead most of the time in the third and fourth quarters. And the other team's got to throw the football. They got to go to the air. So obviously your stats on the ground are going to be favorable. And a couple of teams ran well. UNLV, almost 200 yards rushing, and Stanford with Brad Muster, 185 yards. First and 10 for the Eastern Michigan Hurons at their 36. Here's Gary Patton, and he picks up good yardage. Out to the 43-yard line before again, Greg Cox, a senior, rover back from Columbus, Ohio, puts him down. Another key, they're missing their middle guard. They're all PCAA first-team middle guard, Larry Sandston. He's uh, missed the last two games with a foot injury and is not ready for the California Bowl. Stephen Guthrie, or Stephen Guthrie, is in there in his place. And, you know, that's obviously a very key position to stop the run. Here's Jimmy Johnson, and making the tackle there is Richard Johnson, reserve left tackle behind Hutcherson. He's a junior from San Jose. That'll bring up a third down for Eastern Michigan. Big play defensively, held him to no gain. They got to get a few of those plays. They can't keep giving them positive yardage every play. If you give them three, four yards, they'll keep on doing what they've been doing. That's just keep the football away from you. Defensively, they may be gambling right here just to try to get that football. Eastern Michigan has picked up one of their first two third down conversions on their own. They've also been aided by penalty. 
He's going to pitch. Patton pulls it down, has the corner, and he has the first down. I don't and know. The 47 is going to be close. I believe he had it. Let's see where they spun it. And where he spots it, they do have it. Watch this block on the sideline here. Jimmy Johnson, watch the block that he makes. If we can see it here, he just spins the guy up in the air. There it is. <laughs> he lands on his face. <laughs> he talked about face blocks. That's one where the defender gets his face in the grass. That's what he wanted before. That's why he was yelling at Bob Foster, which is probably why Jimmy Johnson's in there leading that play this time. Jimmy Johnson is the uh, brother of Anthony Johnson, the outside linebacker. He's also played fullback quite a bit this year, which means he's worked on his blocking. Yeah. He's only 2 on 1. He's a junior. He's behind. Adams with Patton and the up man and the bone is Nash. They throw it to Johnson on the pitch. Great block there by Patton yep. to spill Cox. And they pick up good yardage again on first down. And that is a good block by Patton. He put his man on the ground. They're blocking well for each other. That's a tough play defensively. You're out in the open field with a man. He's got everything on you. He just flips him right up in the air, makes the block and gives Jimmy Johnson four or five yards on the play. Johnson now three carries, 24 yards, and we have not seen Bob Foster come back into the game since Harkema rather loudly pulled him off the field for missing a block. Well, one thing about the wishbone, you get to carry the ball, but you better block when the other guy's carrying it. Second and six. One of the interior people for Eastern Michigan jumped off sides. I believe it was Evan Hicks, and he's hard to miss at 325, number 71. He had everybody jumping. He went with a long count. Sometimes you fool your own people, see? He went with a long count. You see the hard count? You can see his shoulder and his head move. And sometimes if you can, you can actually draw up your own men at times. I think that's what he did to Evan Hicks. And also Mark Ziegler, the wide receiver, even went off sides. Evan Hicks reported to camp this year at 337 pounds. He got down to 325 where he's playing <laughs> at now. Good blocker, though. Second team All-Mac. And he is an outstanding Run blocker, the best uh, run blocker they have on the on the uh, team on the line. All he's got to do is get in the way. It's a long time to go around him. Second down at 11 now. Second penalty against Eastern Michigan. Adams on the keeper. He's hit hard by Cox. That'll bring up a third down and eight. Greg Cox. He calls himself the body rocker. Greg C. Status. He is an intense player certainly uh, high on his ability oh well, watch this hit right there if you can make hits like that you can be the whatever you pick any name you want if you can make hits like that greg Cox, a big strong safety or a small linebacker sort of in between six foot two sixteen yeah. but he's also listed as a backup linebacker so he's a guy that can go uh, in the secondary or the linebacker position body rocker greg c status the status means that someday he will amount to something big he already <laughs> has maybe the nfl there's a third down play Adams he's not going to pick it up I tell you what they were very lucky there if they don't make that tackle they're blitzing and playing man-to-man -man defense all the rest of the players were downfield covering people this is where Adams is dangerous if he busts through here if he can break through if Patton would have just turned around and blocked somebody he may have been able to break through there and everybody else was run off with their men in coverage yep Tim Wells Richard Johnson all combined on the tackle first time of the ball game we'll see Ron Bonitis out of Hamilton, Canada. They have uh, four players on Eastern Michigan Club from Canada, three from Hamilton. He's having a good year, about 38 yards a kick. This one goes nowhere. He flubbed it. It'll bound to the 25. They back away. Takes they a roll. Oh, hit one of the Spartans, apparently. Free ball. And the Hurons have it. What a break there for the Hurons. It glanced off the field and just grazed one of the San Jose State back people. They usually have a call. They usually have a call telling them to stay away from the football. Watch him bounce right. Hits the blocker right there on the leg, on the side of the leg. And Eastern Michigan came down and made the recovery, got the football. They're down to 12-yard line. Another big break for Eastern Michigan. That man back has to yell and warn those blockers because they can't be looking up for the football. He's got to make a call. Fire or something like that a lot of teams use. It means to stay away from the football. Look up. Get off the field. Jim Colissimo right there recovered the fumble. It appeared to just touch Ryan Rasnick's leg. Everything's going Eastern Michigan's way early. They're up 10-7. 10.55 to play. They run wide. With Patton trying to turn the corner. 
Now he cuts back, and he's nailed a face mask penalty, though, on, I believe, Chris Alexander. As Patton was starting to go the other way, and Alexander just grabbed his face mask. Well, this is what Patton likes to do, and they play this well defensively. If you watched any film on this guy at all, and I'm sure, obviously, their defense has, he loves to go inside like that, draw you in, and bounce outside. Now, Barry Kidney stayed outside. He had contained, forced him back, but right there, face mask, Chris Alexander, and trying to make the tackle, got in by the face mask. Really, I think that's going to end up almost back to the same spot that it was, and whether they call it 5 or 15 yards may have a difference whether it's incidental or it's flagrant. Eugene Wirtz right now in conference with his officials again from the WAC conference. And we'll see what Mr. Wirtz has diagnosed. We have a clipping clip against the defense. Half the distance from the previous spot. First down. What? <laughs> well, that was, we saw very obviously the face mask. We didn't see any clip and uh, you don't see that very often on defense. After Michigan University and Randy Hoffman from San Jose State. And Randy, after 13 years at Maryland, you've gone out to the West Coast, and it must be a thrill from you in your first year to be go to the California Bowl. It's a real thrill, uh, Stan. It's, you know, I miss the East Coast, but the West Coast is a wonderful place to be. San Jose State University is a terrific university. It makes my job easier to come in here and have an outstanding football team. And the reception that we've had this year from our fans and, and supporters has been tremendous. And just to go to a bowl game is just a lot of fun for everyone. All right, well, Gene Smith, Randy's new. You've been at Eastern Michigan for several years, and you've seen this program pick itself up from the bottom all the way to the top. Yes, it's a good feeling. I'll tell you, Stan, uh, the program was at the bottom, and Jim Harkin has done an excellent job of recruiting some uh, good student athletes, and we're very proud to be out here representing the Mid-American Conference. Well, I know the players have had a great week out here by that famed Fresno hospitality, and we're going to go to John Wallace at the Cow Bowl for the insight on this past week. Even before the Hurons and Spartans set foot in Fresno, Cow Bowl week was off on the right foot, the traditional 10K run stepping out in style. Then the champions of their respective conferences were welcomed with unmatched Fresno hospitality to begin a whirlwind of activities. The reward for being a champion unfolded. Formula race cars had a tough time accommodating some of the players, but they poured themselves into the machines and burned off some early bowl week energy. While every prior California Bowl week included a short trip to nearby majestic Yosemite National Park, heavy snow kept the Cal Bowl 7 players inside on the San Joaquin Valley floor, pinning their hopes on another, more accessible target. Yes, they practiced, in ideal weather too, but the coaches allowed them ample time to savor their championship rewards, an enjoyable series of activities including the event that remains with all Cal Bowl participants over the years, meeting the kids, the youngsters at Valley Children's Hospital, being paired with young people who have struggled, most often overcoming adversity, not always, though. The battle of champions, the fight for life, the theme of the California Bowl. A great week, as always, and now it's to the playing field for the Spartans and the Hurons. Six days of fun is over, to be remembered for years to come. Well, it has been a great week for Eastern Michigan and even a better opening half as they lead by three at 17-14. Greg Pop alongside Stan White back in Fresno, California. You have to say, Stan, that Coach Harkema's game plan has worked to perfection in the yeah. first half. You couldn't ask for anything more. I'm sure he wishes he still had that 10-point lead he had earlier before the final score by San Jose State, but it's worked. He's kept the football away from San Jose and Mike Perez, and he's got to be happy, and I'm sure the kids are saying, hey, at least we can know we, know we can play with these guys as Bob Foster scores the first touchdown. That was set up by a great punt return. And San Jose State came right back. Kenny Jackson scored from six yards out, tied the ball game at seven. Following a Hennigan field goal from 42, Bob Foster scored from a yard out. And late, 
James Saxon tossed on the halfback option to Bill Klump, and that made it 17-14. So that late touchdown you just saw scored there on the pass from Saxon to Klump has San Jose State within three. But time of possession, the big stat there, 19-13 for Eastern Michigan, and the Spartans just over 10 and a half, and the yards rushing, Eastern Michigan, yep. 128. Well, that's exactly, those are the two stats that Jim Harkham have felt he had to win to win the football game. Two to one in time of possession, and being able to run the football to control it. All right, we should have a good second half. We'll kick it off in a moment. From high atop Bulldog Stadium, Greg Papa and Stan White are set to begin. We're set to watch. They're set to begin. Yeah, the, we're uh, just going to be up here half. enjoying it. And it has become very dark in Fresno, California. Most of the folks you see have not come back to their seats because they're probably getting some hot chocolate or hot coffee or something. The temperature again, 40 degrees, and the sun that was uh, out in brilliance in the first half, Stan, has kind of dipped down. We're in Fresno, California, and it, it feels like we're in uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan, the home <laughs> of the Hurons. That's right. Yeah, this is Eastern Michigan weather right here. They got to be feeling they're going to have an advantage here. And you know, one thing that they go in at halftime, these players right now are saying, hey, these guys aren't that good. The Hurons we can are beat right. these guys. Yeah, Eastern Michigan go in and say about San Jose State, you know, they're 10 and 1. They beat the Pac 10 schools. They're ranked 20th in the country. But I'll tell you what, we can play with them. Yeah. We can beat these guys. And there was a lot of talk from the Huron people about just how cocky the San Jose State people are, in particular Greg Cox. We spoke about it earlier, but the whole Spartan team has that kind of Raider renegade attitude that really got this Huron team pumped. John Lupp will kick off to begin the third quarter, and he does so very, very short, trying to keep it under the arms of Saxon, but he can't do it. Saxon picks it up, and he's out across the 35, and he spilled it about the 36-yard line, where Perez and the Spartans begin first and 10. Saxon, again, the 10th best kick returner in the nation at uh, better than 25 a return, and they have tried to keep it away from him, and uh, Claude Gilbert said when they kick off to begin the third quarter, Stewart back away, Saxon run up there and grab it, and they did, and they have very good field position. All those short kicks, they've had good field position each time. Perez in the first half, 11 of 17 for 133 yards. The handoff on first down up the middle. It goes. And the tackle made by Phil Seletka, a senior. No gain on the run there by Kenny Jackson. I tell you what, they've been able to stop that running attack of Kenny Jackson. <laughs> I think the last six carries now, he's got about two yards. So, you know, they've been shutting that down. Now they got Saxon as a single back. Overall for the ball game, he is now 10 for 38 yards and 34 of them came in the first series. Perez to throw, and he overfires Guy Liggins there. Kurt, uh, Keith Bertram, the linebacker, dropped back in coverage. Perez now. He's 11 of 18. Again, only 133 yards passing. The guy averages better than 338 a ball game. Well, that was a, that was one of the few bad decisions he made. He was determined to get the ball to Liggins on that play, despite the good coverage. He had Saxon, who caught uh, 61 balls his own yes. on his own this year, and if he could just dumped off to him, he'd had some positive yardage. Saxon goes off the field. Jackson alone set back three wide receivers. Liggins moves in motion, joins Johnny Johnson. Near sideline, Perez throws to Kenny Jackson. 40, needs the 46 for the first down. And he's close, but I believe he's shoved out short. Will mark him down at about the 44 and a half yard line. Good play there by Charles Gordon, number one. The corner to step up and push him out. Well, they're going to punt the football, but this is the one thing that Harkham is afraid of. The Eastern Michigan coach is the yardage he makes after he catches the light. Misses one, misses two tackles right there. And the third and fourth man get him down. But you have to be able to stop that in order to uh, stop this uh, the San Jose State team. Tom Deal punted once in the first half. It went 35 yards. Here's number two. And over end, get a bound, take a San Jose State roll. Gordon picks it up. And a face masking penalty is called immediately on Yepi Pa'u'u. Another one. That's about four or maybe five that we've had today. So I don't know what it is uh, that uh, starts this whole thing going on uh, on face mask penalties but uh, they, they're coming in rashes and I talked about how the uh, Spartans liken themselves to the Raiders of the NFL and like the Raiders they they pick up a lot of penalties on defense we're calling this one 15 yards too so it's not your normal five yard one so it goes from the 25 to the 40 where Eastern Michigan will put it in play when we come back 
to Fresno. Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by GTE. G? No. GTE. And I'll give you a G. Ron Adams has passed three times, completed two for zero yards. <laughs> that's the wishbone at its best, right? His team that's up by right. three. But they're winning the football game. That's the most important stat. First and ten, Adams. Two setbacks behind him, Nash and Patton. Here comes Gary Patton running left and running wide. Good pursuit flag down. He picks up five yards. We may have a hold, though, on Eastern Michigan. Eugene Wirtz, it is holding. Our referee says, so negate a five-yard pickup, and that'll be a 10-yard infraction, bringing up a first down and 20. The Road Warriors of Eastern Michigan holding before the year. Gets the offense, still first down. They were given their schedule, which had mostly road games, five away games in the MAC. So Jim Harkema, using reverse psychology, had Road Warrior buttons and pins printed up, got his team psyched to go on the road, and it worked. They won four of their five MAC games away, won four of six overall. And before that, before this year, not a single team in the MAC was even a remotely good road team. And he really got his team to play strongly on the road. And now they're thousands of miles away from their home, but playing very well. Now it's first and 20. They go back to the bone. They move Patton out of it. And they took too much time. <laughs> That's going to be back-to-back -back penalties on them. Now they're moving the wrong direction. They can't afford to do that. One of the things about a running offense or a wishbone offense, you can't make mistakes. You can't have penalties because it's much tougher to get those yards back on the ground than it is a, a Perez-led passing attack. They have a lot easier time getting it back. Well, Rod Adams, when they when they did throw the ball, Stan, they, he threw pretty well. He has got a, a pretty strong arm. Uh, in fact, uh, early this year, he had a great year. And a better year last year, wound up with 1,427 yards passing, five touchdowns, seven interceptions. He was the uh, all-MAC first-team unanimous quarterback. He does have a strong arm if they need to throw it downfield. He's not yet done that in the ballgame by design. He may have to. Now he fires over the middle. It's complete to Craig Ostrander, a junior wide receiver. And that picks up some. That'll bring up second down at about 13. Tackle made by Phil Fresh. Well, that just is a, a quick uh, break off on the blitz. They came with the full out blitz, and that's one of your favorite blitz patterns, just a quick break by the wide receiver, and Adams delivers the football right into the bread basket. He makes the catch, and that's what you do at the blitz, that quick set and throw. That'll stop those teams from blitzing. Before the year began, the Hurons did not have a single wide receiver who caught a pass in college football on this level before, all new guys. Adams is popped as he fires, complete this time to Ziegler. And he's pushed out of bounds short of the first down. Jay Taylor and Ryan Rasnick, a sophomore out of Torrance, California, makes the play, bringing up a third down in short. Again, they come with the inside blitz and single coverage on the outside. All he does is look out there, gets a little more time to throw this time, hits the hook pattern, a good open field tackle, keeps him short of the first down. But now they're back in the area they want to be, third down and short, third and three. And those first two worked well. Put out two wide receivers, move Nash, slot right, lone setback is Gary Patton. Spartans were over anxious again, and this will give Eastern Michigan the first down on the penalty, unless one of the Hurons jumped. I don't believe they did, though. Well, that was on purpose. That was a long count. Did you see him barking, his head Certainly. moving? In pro ball, you'll get, uh, you'll get that call on the uh, quarterback a lot of times when his head moves like that, head bobbing. Head Offside, it's defense. First down. And the, and the center also was played a part in that. As soon as he saw somebody jump, he snapped the ball. So it, it really didn't have a, a snap count coming. All he did is he waited until somebody drew off sides, and then he snapped the football. If it, it probably was on four or five on down the line if somebody wouldn't have jumped off sides. But a good play and a first down keeps the drive alive and keeps even more important their hands on the football. I don't know how Claude Gilbert has made it through this entire year with all of these defensive penalties. They run Bob Foster. And he breaks the tackle out across the 40. <laughs> and a good pickup. I don't know if he broke it. He just carried the tackle with him. Talk about riding the uh, riding the Bronco here. He just jumped on his back and 
got a little bit of a ride here. Watch uh, Foster take the handoff just to get in the power play. Doesn't get much of a block. His lead blocker falls down, so he's got to become his own blocker. Now watch, he does right here. Just carries the man all the way Greg down the Cox. field. Yeah, Rick Greg Cox, Cox. Who, is, uh, who has made some big hits. Greg Cox, uh, we said inside uh, linebacker, strong safety, sort of a dual role. Second down and two. And off goes to the fullback Nash. Out near first down yardage, but not a big gain. I mean, real close to the first down, and that's what they want to do. I mean, they may even want not to have the first down here. Beat up another 30 seconds of the clock, get another first down, use up another play. Well, they might have to measure this one. Yeah, they're going to bring it in now. Harkema wants the first down stand. He's pointing. <laughs> he doesn't buy your theory. Give him four new downs. Tell you what, I'd try to use as many of those 30-second segments as I could. I'd take another free one. They're we'll certainly going to be close, one. obviously. And they're going to be short, or do they make it by the nose? It's one of those where you got to slip a credit card in between and figure out if it hits or not. He's got just the inches, they say. Not even inches, millimeters, huh? See the NFL game, or I think it was Ben Rice slipped a piece of paper down in between the uh, the ball and the uh, post to see if he had the first down. Well, this isn't even a bad time right here on third down and an inch to uh, sure, take a gamble, one. go all the way, go for the big one. I don't think he will, but uh, you know, what the heck, it'd be a good play. They come, they don't have the wishbone in. Well, they have two wide receivers. Nobody's covering the outside receiver at the top. There's nobody yeah, covering him. Benzinger's it. all by himself. If Adams looks left, he's all by himself, Benzinger. Let's see if he audibilizes. No, oh, he no. runs it alone. As Dan Benzinger, number 18, lined up left, and there wasn't a single Spartan on the left side of the field. And Harkham is down there holding his head. One of the assistant coaches kicking the ground. Benzinger should have made him aware of the fact that he wasn't covered. He's looking left, and that's where Benzinger is. Just a little quarterback sneak, but they had six points for sure. Nobody covered Benzinger, the wideout. I think the defense only had 10 men on the field. But Adam snuck for it. They have four more downs. I can't believe that he wouldn't see that. You've got to look out at the wide receivers every play. Fullback <laughs> Nash right up behind Adams to hand off to Foster. Paul gets in there and drops him to the backfield. That's what's called blitzing to the right gap. He ran right into the play. Just another blitzing linebacker. You see him come through here. Just happened to call it right to the right area. He went through two men, though, to make the play. So the hung and hit man wasn't able to get him down for a loss. Foster is strong enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. But that's what you got to do defensively and start gambling when you can't control yeah. him. Put him in these long down situations. Dare them to throw the football. Yepi Pau was playing in his fourth straight bowl game. Two on the junior college level. Of course, last year the Spartans were here in the Cal Bowl. And one pick, 37-7. Flare out, skip pass. Mark Ziegler off one hop. And that'll bring up a third down situation. Yeah, just a bad pass. He had him down in a curl. Looked like he had almost short-armed that one, like he was afraid the back was going to cut in front of him. And uh, when he pulled it away, it just went right down into the ground. Looked almost like Mark Malone of the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I don't want to be cruel, but I heard a great line about him about how Mark Malone and uh, Larry Bird had a lot in common. They both throw great bounce passes. <laughs> Hope Mark is not listening today. They're down in 10. Steelers will have a shot at the AFC Central then. They're tied for the lead. And they took too long again, Adams did. And it's twice he has done this. I think their offensive right tackle jumped off sides. Clock also went down to zero. See which one Mr. Wirtz singles out. Dead ball, false start, offense, third down. False start. When the lineman moved to stand set, that'll bring up a third down and about 15 yards to go. The big man, Evans Hicks, 325 pounds. When he starts to move, it's tough to stop it. And all you gotta do is get a little momentum and it's gonna keep going. Ever so slightly, rain has begun to fall here in Fresno. That works to the advantage of Eastern Michigan. The worse the field conditions, the better it is for a running team. Adams again confused, and he now calls a timeout. 9.07 to play the third quarter, beginning very slowly. 
but Eastern Michigan's happy. They have still a three-point lead. We are back. Greg Papa, Stan White, Fresno, California, where the rain is tumbling a little stronger than it was moments ago, and now can become a factor as a number of umbrellas have popped up. Here's a third and 15 for Eastern Michigan. Ziegler and Ostrander split wide each side. Adams going to throw it downfield. No, he's not. He is really hit hard by Greg Cox. The rover back roved in the backfield that time for his second sack of the day. Well, he got pressured and made step up in the pocket, and Cox hit him right in the face. See right here, they come with the blitz. Somebody comes free right there, makes him step up, and then Cox just cleans up on him right there. But he didn't get as good a hit as it looked to begin with. He sort of got him with the arm and drug him backwards. Cox was quoted as saying this week, Stan, these guys, referring to Eastern Michigan, have a chip on their shoulder that's going to get knocked off. It was a whole thing about each team performing a rap song at the steak dinner they had here Monday, which got Cox fired up, which is not hard to do. Here's a good kick by Benitez. Going to bound inside the five and roll in the end zone. And Perez and the Spartans will begin from their 20 with 8.18 to play. Third quarter, still Eastern Michigan leading San Jose State by three. Well, Mike Perez and San Jose State have a history the last couple of years of uh, comebacks some big second half victories late long way to go here at 18 to play they'd like to start to come back now as they fire it out and the ball is batted down to the line of scrimmage there by Louis Cafazo as they strung it out and he made a nice play stepping up there the sophomore from Hamilton Ontario yeah if you can pick that off he walks into the end zone again that read screen it's almost a backwards throw it's close to being a lateral right here, even though he did hit the ball. I don't know the official. I didn't see if he made a call or not, but uh, it's real close to being thrown backwards, which would make that a free ball despite the fact that it hit the ground. And San Jose State really is abandoned in the, the run game. They're a pretty good running team. With Jackson and Saxon presence thrown almost every time. Here he goes again. Complete to Kenny Roberts. And he's down at midfield. The catch and the run, something Jim Harkema was concerned about. The yardage the Spartan receivers get, mainly Liggins. That time Roberts, though, stand after they catch the football. Well, again, Liggins in motion draws a crowd. You can see them all start to come up on him, and they just hit the slant pattern to Roberts behind the linebackers. The linebacker has got to, once Liggins leaves his zone, stay there. He can't be running out of his zone to help somebody else and open it up for somebody like Kenny Roberts. Tackle made by Anthony Johnson. Big pickup, though. Here's Perez on first and ten, firing it as caught. Out there in the flat is Guy Liggins, who was having a quiet game. Every game that he has played in San Jose State, for San Jose State, he has caught at least four with that catch. Liggins now has caught three. And that time he slipped to stand. Certainly the, the field is becoming a factor with his light rain falling. And we noticed it was a little bit slippery even before the game started. So if it gets wetter now with this rain, uh, it's even going to be tougher. But the slippery part, as long as you got a ball to throw, sometimes works to the offensive advantage. Flag down. Mike Bernard came out of his stance. Now they're swinging at each other. They're playing Spartan football as they shove each other late. The left guard and left tackle, both of them jump back. That's going to be five yards. Perez was the guy coming in there pushing people away. Jim Carter, maybe senior, and uh, Mike Bernard both jumped. May be able to bench press, but uh, I'll tell you what, everybody on that defensive line for Eastern Michigan bench press over 400 pounds, so quarterback's got to watch it. Well, that's one thing Jim Harkema talked about yesterday in our meeting with him stay the fact that uh, San Jose State is a quick football team but he didn't think that they, their, their size was much of a factor he thought his team could uh, win the physical battle he wanted to keep the game close so he talked about the space relationship San Jose State is a quicker team obviously but he thought his guys could, could play with them muscular wise we have a dead ball ball start against the offense we have a dead ball a personal foul against the offense wow. disqualification 20-yard penalty one of the Spartans has been kicked 
out of the game. So it isn't Perez, huh? <laughs> yeah, he was involved in that. Let's see which one they do uh, kick out. Who gets ejected? Well, James Saxon's walking off the field. I don't think he was involved, though. You would think one of the line people was involved. Hey, we'll see it on the replay. He jump off sides. He slaps him on the helmet. Knocks the guard. 67, Jim Carter has been kicked out of the game. Oh, right there, a punch. Yeah, Carter threw a punch and hit Eric Miller right in the face. Yeah, that, that's an automatic disqualification. Things so, are starting to heat up. Carter's collegiate career is over right there. The senior is done. First team PCAA player this year kicked out. And Mark Frederick, a junior, is forced in to play the left guard position. And the Spartans went way back on that play. It was second and uh, four. Now it's second and 25. Now they have to rehuddle up again. That's the big draw screen down now on this uh, this type of situation. You get everybody dropping back real deep, which I'm sure Eastern Michigan will do. You try to dump it over the line, get a blocker out, and break a tackle and get a chunk of that yardage back. Again to Jackson. Great move, then he loses his footing at about the 38-yard line. He really put a great move on Scott Weika and then lost his feet. Well, let's question whether Weika leg whipped him, though, here. You can't tackle with your legs. You can't trip. See what Weika does right here. See if we can get it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I think that may be called tripping, don't you? That was close. Conrad, <laughs> Conrad Dobler was also here talking to both teams the other day at a luncheon. Maybe he... Uh, told Weika one of his old tricks. Yeah, well, that was one of the best that he had. Yeah. He was better off tripping than he was trying to block him. Were you in the game yeah. when you played with the Baltimore Colts when he leg whipped, uh, John, actually the Cowboys there playing that game, John Dutton, one of your former teammates, <laughs> when Dobler was a Buffalo Bill. And now Mike Perez is forced to call a timeout. We have a very, very slow-paced third quarter going on here, and we'll take a timeout, too. 6-17 to play in the third. Eastern Michigan still up 17-14. to 14. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lock. While this game has been a surprise in some respects, no surprise penalty yard. San Jose State led college football this year and last year in penalties. Now Perez's passes blocked the line of scrimmage by Mike Burns. Big play by Burns there. And now it's fourth down. Yeah, they set up a middle screen to James Saxon. We thought it'd be a screen in the down before, but they went to the screen on this play. He just tries to dump it over the on-charging defensive line. See right there, Bronco Vincic just knocks the football down. They had it set up pretty well, too. Yeah, Vincic blocked it. Burns was standing next to him. Tom Deal to punt. Charles Gordon is back. Another poor effort by Deal. Will bounce and go out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 6.06 to play, third quarter. And the third quarter has gone very, very slowly, which Eastern Michigan is happy about. And the fact that San Jose State has not done much offensively, still hanging on to a three-point lead, but plenty of time for Perez and the Spartans to get themselves back. Well, at the slow pace is a component of all the penalties that are being called. It stops the clock, stops play. The unbalanced line, wishbone, or unbalanced left here, Greg. That means the tight end is playing on the left side of the formation. Bill Cup, number 84. They run right, fool everybody. There's Bob Foster who scored twice today on across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Well, Adams does on the unbalanced. He sees whether they adjust defensively. If they adjust to the strong side, then he goes back weak because you got one less man to block, one less man to worry about. You've uh, made them over adjust to the strong side. If they don't adjust, then you got a man advantage over there and you go towards the strong side. So either way, you have something you can work on. Foster is now out there with Jimmy Johnson as they give Patton a rest. Go back is Nash. Here's Jimmy Johnson. He is spilled down near the 40-yard line. And some glaring going on. Greg Cox, intimidator from Columbus, Ohio. Donnie Ray, the defensive coordinator, says he thinks he's a gangster the way he plays. He's a thug. Columbus, Ohio. Huh? Well, maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> You see right here, yeah, they're, 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 the officials going to have to get a, get this uh, thing under control here because it's it's getting close to 
breaking into a full-fledged brawl and something like that. Yeah, Resnick. Uh, Resnick shoved him late for no reason. Yeah, these guys are out there. Uh, they're getting their butts whipped, and they're trying to uh, intimidate somebody. Well, that's the nature of the defense. Paru is going to blitz. They stop it. Adams throws. Intercepted by Resnick. He went down. The one knee went down. At the 49, a flag is thrown again late. I think Pau may have teed off on somebody. That's always a good bet. Again, they never sees the free safety, Rasnick. He looks for the slant pattern off the blitz, but the free safety came off his coverage and just went right in front to make the interception. We'll see if it was a post-possession foul or whether Eastern Michigan gets the ball back. Of course, we'll see who it's on, I guess, huh? See Rasnick again. His knee is down when he makes the interception. There's an interception. First down. No flag. Now that's a strange one. Guy threw it. Didn't mean to, apparently. I never understood how that happens. Anyway, Rasnick on the interception. And the Spartans take it back at their own 49 yard line. The statistics in this ballgame will not count towards the season totals. Rasnick coming to the ballgame had had one interception. His brother, by the way, Rick Rasnick, is the offensive coordinator of the San Jose State Spartans, and now he's back to work. And they have abandoned, I talked about it the last series, they have not run the football at all. Stand very few times, 12 times the first half, and hardly any in the second. They're going to pass again. And Liggins is open behind him, but he makes the catch. Slides down, first down at the 37-yard line of That's Eastern Michigan. Linebackers get sucked up, and I don't know why. He just said they hadn't run the whole half. There's no sense in worrying about the run. The play action just brings the line. Watch the linebackers up here. They're only four or five yards deep. They got to get back there with Liggins. And they should be back there in that throwing lane. You can't give him that area to throw the football. Liggins is the man he wants, the slot man on play action. That's his fourth catch of the day. So that all makes it 24 out of 24 in his college career, at least four catches. Perez off play action rolls right. Where's he going? He's going the wrong way. Burns in pursuit, gets a block. He finds Johnny Johnson, and this whole play will lose about three yards. <laughs> Keith Bertram makes the tackle. Mike Perez started running straight backwards like his own, going for his own goal line. He must have been watching some Fran Tarkington films to uh, run that direction. He's lucky he didn't get thrown for a 20-yard loss. But again, the play action, they took away Liggins' outcut, made him cut back to the inside. There's nobody for Perez to throw to. He just makes uh, something happen on his own. He finally throws it to Johnny Johnson. He'd probably been better off just dropping the football and going back to the line of scrimmage. And probably the only rap on Perez is, is he's not a, uh, a gifted runner. John Elway saw him play once this year and questioned whether he could throw the long ball. Perez got mad at that, says, certainly I can. I'm not a great runner, though. The middle of the ball is deflected <laughs> and incomplete. <laughs> they, Mike Burns almost got hit right in the face on that when he turned around. The ball went right off his shoulder pads. He doesn't look. He's making a drop without looking. Linebackers need to keep their eyes on the quarterback, and if he would have, he'd have made the interception. You can see, just as he turns, it goes right off his right shoulder pad. He hardly ever saw it. Now, again, Mike Burns is listed as a defensive end stand, but they, those two outside guys kind of read things, see what they're going to play, and they, they will drop back like linebackers. That's right. They can go. They got four men listed as defensive linemen. They can drop Eric Miller off. They can drop Mike Burns off and end up with a three-man rush, but here they go, third down and long. Johnny Johnson, Guy Liggins in motion. Also, Kenny Roberts out there. Three receivers for Perez over the middle. He throws complete to Kenny Jackson. And he lunges for the first down before Keith Bertram pulls him down. A big third and 12. They pick up 15 to Kenny Jackson. I'll tell you what, Liggins was open for a touchdown. If you could have seen him, they came with the uh, rush. Came with the rush and went man defense. Kenny Jackson should not be able to beat the linebacker that easily coming out from right through the line of scrimmage. He should be able to bang him and stop him. It's not very good coverage by Keith Bertram. Kenny Jackson last year caught 52 passes. This year, 32. Today, he has five. And you see his numbers there, 34 yards. He's now in the eye behind Saxon. Again, Liggins in motion. He's in motion almost every play. They hand off to Jackson. Good hole. Still on his feet. And he's down to the 12-yard line. Jerry Smith, sophomore rover back from Jackson, Michigan, number 31, finally pulls him down. Well, this is the draw play. Watch the delay draw. The back split out of eye. Every time those backs split, it's either the draw or the fake draw. Linebackers have to come up when they see that and plug their holes. 
When they stay back that far, it gives the offensive lineman time to set up, come down the field, and block and create the lane for Kenny Jackson. And now it is raining quite hard, and you see the heavy wrap on uh, Jackson's upper right thigh. He has taken some pops in this football game. 11 carries now, 50 yards. It is now pouring. Perez throws. Johnny Johnson gets a block. Carries a man into the end zone. Touchdown, San Jose State. And for the first time today, they have the lead. Well, we talked about it again. Liggins lined up at fullback, and we said the next time he goes out in motion, watch for the play action pass. We thought they might go to Liggins, but instead he turns away from Liggins, ends up hitting Johnny Johnson, who's listed as a wide receiver, but really, in fact, is a yes. tailback, and they needed him at that wide receiver position. In fact, he'll probably be the tailback next year when both Saxon and Kenny Jackson graduate, but he shows his running ability. That's why they like to throw screens to him, just let him use that running ability. Oliveira's on for his third point after touchdown. And he's got it. And with 2.24 to play, third quarter, the Spartans, favored by 17 today to win their second straight Cal Bowl, finally have the lead on this play. Well, here it is. You see Liggins. There he is lined up at fullback. They'll set up. He'll go to his right. Well, that was not obviously the touchdown play. No, that's going the wrong way. There he goes. He's going out to the right. Kenny Jackson out to the left. Johnny Johnson, excuse me, out to the left. He takes the ball, just runs in. He runs over Menard, but uh, you know that's a tough uh, tackle to make in the open field like after the free safety coming all that way on a running back who's 6'3", 210. Yeah, and Johnny Johnson, you mentioned a great high school running back, one of the best in Northern California, senior year two years ago, ran for better than 1,700 yards. They played him at tailback last week, not last week, a month ago in their last game. <laughs> against Long Beach against Long Beach and he ripped off uh, 59 yards and was very strong and Claude Gilbert said most definitely uh, Johnny Johnson will go by tailback next year Johnny Johnson's father is the fifth all-time leading rusher at San Jose State and it is really really now pouring here in raisin country which will be good for the raisin growers but not good at for San Jose State's pass attack, you would believe, but also that can help a, a passing team with the fact defensive backs have to be more cautious. What well, was it due to the wishbone attack? Yeah, yeah well, that uh, makes the uh, exchanges that much more difficult. The pitches and everything else. It always helps, I guess, the team that has the lead. Right now it's the Spartans. Here's Leonard Smith on his four. Out across the 30th. This guy's had some big runs back today, and he stumbles out across his 40-yard line. 37-yard return. Leonard Smith, who coming into the ballgame, averaged less than 20 of a turn. And he's a little guy, only five, six and a half. Well, watch the speed he hits this with. He's going full speed. That's what you got to do when you return a kick. You can't go up there looking for a hole. You got to approach it full speed. Watch him. He's going all out right there. He sees the hole, accelerates, he darts. He doesn't dance around. He makes a good cut. That one last man right there coming back from the side really left him from going one on one with the last man. You can see it from the end zone. Sorry, Stan. Blanche Smith got the game started on the right note for Eastern Michigan, taking the opening kick 48 yards. They ran Gary Patton here on first down and across the 45-yard line. And they're going to stick with their game plan. They're not going to change now because they're down by four points, 21 to 17. They still want to control the football. They still want to keep it out of Mike Perez's hands. And all they got to do is drive down and get a score. I mean, they'd love to do it. It's a seven, eight-minute, nine-minute drive now. That was the first carry of the second half right there for Gary Patton. Now carried the ball 14 times for 70 yards. Last carry, good for three. Starting to show blitz, getting the backs away, so does Pahu. Adam's going to throw, and he's going to throw Patton's deep. Open. He has a man open. It is caught by Gary Patton. As he was there with single coverage against Greg Cox, who was not very fast. And he's not talking a lot after that play, is he? Huh? If you want to shut somebody up, you just start beating them. And that's what Gary Patton did. They faked the play. Patton, you saw him break the bone and go in motion. He just goes down the sideline, and Cox is behind him. And his speed is the question mark. Patton makes a great over-the-shoulder catch, though. That's a tough catch when you got to go over the opposite shoulder. He comes down with the football. That play went for 28 yards. Cox's speed, 4-8, he ran in the mud. Last time he was timed, may cost him a shot of the NFL. They don't know where he can play. Now we have Bill, uh, pardon me, uh, Rob Fogarty, the backup tight end, moved early, obviously. 
And he held on to one of the Spartans there. That should be a false start. Dead ball. False start. Offense. Still first down. Again, the mistakes that you make on an offense uh, that is running the football, based on running the football, much tougher to come back from. First and 15 is tough for Eastern Michigan. Tough to convert. Clock now rolling. Approaching one minute to play in the third quarter. San Jose State 21, Eastern Michigan 17. On the seventh annual California Bowl. Patton moves in motion. And the hand off to Bob Foster is hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped there on a very good line surge by Mike Hutcherson. Well, that's the companion play. That's the play they faked when they threw the ball to Patton. This time they just flipped it over and tried to run the uh, really the sprint draw effect out of the wishbone but just a good tackle a good play by that blitzing gambling 46 defense of the Spartans. Hutcherson a big play there he is a junior out of Las Vegas Nevada for Claude Gilbert. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Barring a pass and we're going to have a pass maybe it won't be Adams is flushed and he throws did he get it off. Is that a fumble. Now they're calling incomplete, incomplete pass. pass. But he may have thrown that ball backwards as it skipped off the field. They call it an incomplete pass with five seconds to play. Well, it was backwards, but it was because he was being hit that the ball flew backwards. He didn't intentionally throw it back. Now watch him get hit right here. Greg Cox. And the reason it went backwards is because of that uh, impact by Cox. Greg Cox stumbled. He was blitzing again from the rover back position. It had time to get his feet and go in there and lay into Ron Adams. Third down, 16 yards they need. And Harkema wants things to hurry up here with five seconds to go. I think we got a blitz coming right here by San Jose State. Third and 16. They burn better, or not. better believe they're going to come. They live for moments like this. First Alexander had him. Adams fires. It is caught. And they have the first down before Jay Taylor makes the tackle as they threw downfield. And it was pulled down there by Craig Ostrander. Again, the Adams makes the play with his own individual talents. The blitz was there. He just gets outside. Stiff arms Chris Alexander moves around, stays in the oh, pocket, the and stays there. He knows he's going to get hit. He throws the ball downfield. Mark Ziegler makes the catch for the first down. They blitz three people, Alexander, Pau, and Cox, and he got away and hit Ostrander for a big play. That is it for three quarters. Our score, San Jose State 21, Eastern Michigan 17. The wishbone attack of Eastern Michigan versus the pass attack of San Jose State. Total yards in favor of the Spartans. But Eastern Michigan has picked it up when they need to. And they've held the ball for almost 10 more minutes. And that's the key. The less time Perez has to put points on the board, the better it is for your team. And last pass to Ziggler, the big one also. Another big in the fourth on. quarter. First and 10 from the Spartan 15. There's Gary Patton. He's he has gone. a hold. He's going to the end zone. Untouched. Eastern Michigan has the lead back. When you blitz, you can sure get burnt. Their linebackers, again, did not keep their eyes open. We've talked about when you're blitzing linebacker-wise, you cannot just let everything fly. You see Mark Cox run right, Greg Cox, excuse me, run right by Patton. You don't even need to block the guy. Just let him run himself out of the play. It opens up the hole. You get past the first wave. And Patton walks in the end zone and does a little bit of a he knows dance. that dance. Watch Cox right here. Just runs right by him. You know, he meant to block him. And then where's he go? Right back to where Cox left. And that's something the Eastern Michigan coaching staff told us. Greg Cox will oftentimes over pursue, and you can catch him on the misdirection plays, which they did right there. That carry by Patton is second of the second half. And the extra point is no good. And that's a big miss right there by Hennigan. He had missed three all year and only one field goal he has missed all year. But that one leaves San Jose State only down by two. A field goal can win. He played five seconds of the fourth quarter here on Zonta. <laughs> to you by GTE. G? No. GTE. Gary Patton runs 15 yards on the first play of the fourth quarter. Eastern Michigan has the lead back. 
23-21. Capping off a six-play, 58-yard drive. Took him two and a half minutes. It was started by the big return, kick return by Leonard Smith after San Jose State on Kenny Jackson's touchdown run had taken their first lead. But the extra point was missed by Hennigan. It's 23-21. And Lop kicks off short again. Fielded on the fly coming in by James Saxon. Stiffs arms. Anthony Johnson is pulled down at his 33-yard line. That's about the best you can expect with that short a kick is to keep about the 30, but that's great field position. They really need to do something to get deeper kickoffs. I don't know why they don't teach the kid to run up and kick the football rather than just taking a step or two. Well, I think they're purposely kicking short so they don't let Saxon get a full head of steam, but I, this is that's questionable yeah, it's, strategy. Yeah, it's working against you when you keep giving the ball between the 30 and the 40 all day long. Let's tell them how much respect they have that Saxon can bust the thing and go all the way. He does have a great return average, but it's long this year, not that, not that long. They run up the middle. Kenny Jackson pulled down. After a gain of about three. 14.35 to play. Fourth quarter. Rain falling in Fresno, California. I'm sure Eastern Michigan will continue to stay with their game plan. As we've talked about, they'll just they'll give them the short stuff and just don't want to give them anything cheap. Play action. Ball is caught by Johnny Johnson. <laughs> he picks up three. Played that one much better than the touchdown play that he had earlier. The very same play. They quit. They faked the run into the uh, line and hit Johnny uh, down the sideline. Good tailback. He hit the wide receiver position, but he does scramble and get close to a first down. He's just two yards short. As the rain now starts coming down real heavy. Not even rain in California. That's Southern California oh. in the summertime. <laughs> it pours in California in the winter. Makes up for the summer. Third and two. Here's Kenny Jackson. Fumbles the football. Eastern Michigan has it. Bronco Vincic. What a play by Bronco, who has made some big plays behind the line of scrimmage, and none bigger than that one. Sure, nothing bigger. That's right. Again, did the rain have any effect? Yeah. Did the rain have any effect on the ball? Looks like a pretty good pitch. He just doesn't catch the football. He's looking up instead of looking at the ball. I don't think it was the rain. I think it was his eyes. You're looking up to see who's got there and where the blocks are coming from instead of catching the football, which is the first thing you have to do. He put it on the ground, and Eastern Michigan gets a huge turnover. Bronco Vincic out of a town called Fruitland, Canada. Jeez. A guy named Bronco from a town named Fruitland doesn't jive. 23-21. Eastern Michigan trying to salt it out now. 13 and a half to play. Here's Foster picking up a few. And you better believe the Spartan defenders start going for the football to strip it. A lot of time left, but the ball right now is a factor as far as the slickness with the rain really coming down and being a factor here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I think if you're in the Eastern Michigan sideline, you're thinking, hey, if we score and go up nine points with the rain coming down, we got to look pretty good. Eastern Michigan players kid Bob Foster that he runs like Eric Dickerson. I wouldn't mind being kidded by that. No, something I think like that's that. a pretty good comparison. Talking about his style. Yeah. He has put up some numbers today, two touchdowns, but not the kind of yardage, obviously, as Adams keeps it on the option out across the 35. Again, they went unbalanced to the right and came back to the short side. Probably part of their game plan. They've probably seen some films where San Jose State has adjusted to the unbalanced and left themselves weaker on the short side. All day long, they've gone unbalanced and gone back short. Ron Adams coming into the ballgame had run for almost 400 yards, third leading rusher today. He has carried nine times for 31 yards. This is third down and eight. Comes the blitz. Uh, who, who is coming? They run the option behind Foster, but he has it, but not the first down. 29 yard line thereabouts. Phil Fresh steps up again. He is a very strong rush defender, and he made the play there. Again, a good block on the corner by his by Gary Patton allows him to go free. See Pat knock him down right here. Watch him. Cuts him right down to the ground, or at least gets him down where he can't make the tackle. Foster just gets close. I think they may go for it in fourth down here. Now they're going. Now they got the man in to kick the field goal. And it's locked. 
Is it Lop or is it Hennigan? No, it's Hennigan. You're right. It's Hennigan. It's 21, not 28. This will be a 46 yard field goal for Tim Hennigan. He made one early in the game. He's hit 10 of 11 this year. It looks long enough, and it is no good. Just one. So San Jose State stays within two. 11.57 to play. Fourth quarter, playing the seventh annual California Bowl. And the Mid-American Conference right now leads the PCAA by a couple of points. A driving rainstorm. Rainstorm here in California. Somewhere over the rainbow, a pot of gold. Stan White told me to say that. Down the middle of the ball, it's complete to Clump. He breaks a tackle, and he dives to the 46 of Eastern Michigan. Tom Menard, the junior. Free safety put him down, but Perez hits it big. Again, that's uh, that's too deep to allow. That's too easy. The defensive man have got to make a play on that. He has nobody running him off. He's just got to come up and hit the tight end. They had three, two other guys shorter than the tight end. And the tight end's not a guy that's going to threaten you deep. You should be able to come up and at least break up that pass. Well, you would think Perez's numbers would be nowhere near as strong as they are. 22 of 32 for better than 250 yards. Jackson inside running and bounces outside. Scott Weika, sophomore linebacker, makes the tackle. They have a young bunch of linebackers. Anthony Johnson, a freshman. is a sophomore. And Keith Bertram is a junior. I'll tell you one thing. If you told Jim Harkema you could go into the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left and be two points in the lead, he'd have taken it in a second. That's exactly what he said. Keep me close in the fourth quarter and give me a shot to win then. The only negative right now is that missed extra point. This is second and seven. Over Kenny Jackson, first down. Kenny Jackson spins 31 yard line. Something Charles was wrong. Gordon made the tackle stand. Yeah, something's wrong when there's nobody over there within 20 yards of the receiver. They had a, uh, Charles Gordon had to come up from 20 yards deep as he was catching the ball at the line of scrimmage. Perez is now thrown for 270 yards, 23 of 33. Sure he's pacing the sideline, saying, "Hey, just hang on, hang on. There's only 10 and a half minutes left." Flanker screen breaks a tackle and he dives first down at the 20 yard line. Again, Tom Menard, six, Brian Carter, 32. That's the play they used for the touchdown to Johnny Johnson. This time it's McLeod faked it in there. Just good pursuit from the inside, saved a big play. See, Wyka comes in there. If he doesn't slow him up, then the next guy can't make the tackle. So, tell you what, you got to keep coming and keep coming because these guys break a lot of tackles. He got a lot of yards after he caught the ball on that one. That's been the story. I mean, Perez is throwing the ball laterally, dumping it off to his backs, throwing short. These guys have broken some tackles. Now Saxon bounces outside, now bounces back in, takes a hit, and spins down for five. Anthony Johnson popped him pretty good for a 207-pound linebacker. He really hit James Saxon. Saxon's very tough. I tell you what, he made that all on his own. It's just a counter play, and it's stuff at the line. You see the men coming from the outside <laughs> although Hefner gets hit right on his back see right there Menard makes a good tackle right there hits him hard spins him around and down San Jose State's offense probably will have uh, five guys drafted in the National Football League Perez Liggins Saxon Mike Bernard and also Kenny Jackson of course here Saxon inside breaks a tackle touchdown San Jose State Saxon throws one earlier to clump and now he busts one up the middle. Well, it reminds you of the one that Gary Patton just ran. Just broke the first wave and walked into the end zone. So many times they've run this on play action. This time they just give it to him, the trap play. I think maybe they overlooked it, looking for where to see the ball was going to go off the play action. They give it to Saxon, and that's too easy, just walking in the end zone. 16-yard touchdown for James Saxon with 9.36 to play. San Jose State now leads by four. Going for two. That'll make it six. Probably going to try some type of pick play in motion with Liggins. Jackson, Saxon behind. Play to Saxon. Flag down. But they were going to. They're going to have to call a new play this time now. Their offense is so diversified. Penley's going to be against Eastern Michigan here. Dead ball. 
Offside against the defense. Half the distance to the goal. And obviously lined up in the neutral zone. Now what do you do? Do you change and go to a running play? You only got a yard and a half to go. But they're offensive people. I mean, you put four wide receivers in the game state. How do you possibly cover all those guys? I mean, well, this is one area you can cover because you don't have to worry about them going behind you. You stay in front of them. But the fear here is being picked off exactly. from one man to the other. And that's how they uh, that's what they were trying to do with Liggins in motion that time. And they do that a lot. I mean, that's a big part of their offense is the old basketball pick up. Now it's a power eye. Three backs behind Stewart, Saxon, Jackson. Pitch to Jackson. Flag is down again. And this play never even got off the ground. Again, a flag down before the snap. Tell you what, they had it stopped, though. It's a bad break for Eastern Head Michigan. Ball. Delay gets the offense. Oh, well, back at the three-yard line for our two-point conversion. I think a delay after the other team has a penalty. I don't know, but it sure worked against the team who uh, the the team who could have had the penalty. These two teams do not want you to make your airplane flight. <laughs> I tell you what, Eastern Michigan had them stopped cold last time. All they have to do right there is just you know, make the tackle. They had three, four guys out there, but no, the play was dead. Well, I said back to the three. In actuality, the first penalty was only a half of the distance right. to the goal. This being a five, so it goes to the seven-yard line. Where they'll go for a two-point conversion. Now you go back to the pick plays. Saxon lines up in a slot. They keep Stewart in. They keep the wishbone. Stewart and Jackson. Rolls off play action. Throws end zone. Overshoots Liggins. They don't get it. That's just a bad throw. If it had been a good throw, he might have got an interference call because Gordon and Liggins uh, wrapped up with each other, but the ball was thrown so poorly they didn't call anything. And by missing that, they negate the edge they had with the missed extra point on Eastern Michigan. 9.36 to play. Spartans have a four-point lead here at 27 to 23 and I'm perplexed at why he would go for two Stan I mean at the situation they had there as long as they kick the extra point and stay up by five uh, they always kept the field goal last chance to put themselves up we'll talk about this when we come back to Fresno in a moment 936 to play in the game as I was saying San Jose State leads by four college basketball fans hang on Missouri and Memphis State will come up in a moment Following this ball game, maybe not a moment. 9:36 to play. Eric Chivas and the Tigers set to play. Also the Tigers at Memphis State. Short kick again. Bernard Smith from his 15, running right. Flag down. Jay Taylor is going to throw him out of bounds. But again, a flag is lying at the 27-yard line, and you have to assume, as always, on a kick return, somebody clipped. Or somebody hell, whatever it is, is going to go backwards on the uh, returning team. Let's get back to the point we were debating before. <laughs> Why would uh, Coach Gilbert go for two and give away the one point he had following the missed extra point? Well, I think at this point he probably figures a four or a five point lead doesn't do you any good. It's the same difference. If you get the six, then you put the pressure on the kicker who's already missed one extra point if they do score a touchdown. And plus there's a possibility of a two field goal. During the run back, half the distance. First down. Half the distance to the goal. You get six ahead, the other team kicks one field goal. You figure they'll probably go for the win rather than tie. If you're only two points ahead, a field goal would beat you. But my theory was if Eastern Michigan scores, then gets the extra point that up 30 27, and San Jose State the only tie with a field goal. It changes as you look backwards. So I guess you got to make a decision, and obviously you do at the time. I was thinking of my defense plays. I don't have to worry about it. Adams rolls, slips, gets back up, fires, intercepted by Jay Taylor. Second time Adams has been picked off, and this one's big. He was going for Ziegler, and Jay Taylor, a great cover guy, very quick stepped up and took it away. Yeah, it's a good play by Taylor. Just watch this throw. It's not a good throw. The man has good position. He cuts in front. He guessed right. You figure when the quarterback rolls, you figure also that the man's going to do an out pattern. He slips right here. I guess he probably wishes he would have fell down at this point. You can see he throws it right there. Jay Taylor breaks underneath. Ziegler makes a big interception. Now Perez at the 25. The handoff to Kenny Jackson. Big hole. 15, 10, 5, 4. Flag down late. Real late. 
And now the officials have to jump between a couple of the players. Jim Hefner of Eastern Michigan is signaling holding. Holding against uh, San Jose San Jose State. State. So that's going to bring it back. And that was a late flag because that that took place after the after Jackson was inside the 10 yard line. See it right here. We can see offense, number 77. We can't see the holding call anywhere, but the flag doesn't go down until about right no. now. It's late. It's very late. It's a senseless holding play penalty because Kenny Jackson was 15 yards away from the play. At least for the referee threw it. They, uh, pardon me, uh, Stan. And that's a ridiculous play. Well, I'll tell you what. When tempers start flaring, and we've seen a lot of them today, stupid things happen. Players make stupid mistakes. I mean, Jim Carter in his last game gets thrown out. He'll remember that the rest of his life. He may remember that holding call for cost him the ball game. Here's Perez. Double pass. Wells going to throw. He threw it short. Liggins comes back and can't make the catch. And Gordon almost had a shot to recover. Apparently, he never hit the ground there. Charles Gordon did it. As the Spartans go back to their deep into their playbook, they throw with Scott Wells on a flanker pass. Wells has thrown one other pass this year for 37 yards. The backward, the first pass is backwards, which is the key. Now watch this. Watch the ball bounce up off his heel. Now watch Gordon here. It's an easy interception for him, but he runs into his own man and drops the ball. Either of them could have had it easily. Hit the back <laughs> of Menard's leg and bounced up. And Gordon could have picked it off and couldn't. Second down and 20. Play action. Perez is all day. Now he fires. Too high for Saxon. He can't put it down. They what Liggins is pounding his thigh pads. He's standing in the middle wide open. You don't think Perez is going to miss Liggins standing wide open, but he did. I don't know what he was looking at, but Liggins was right in the 20-yard line with nobody within five yards of him. That's twice he has done that. At least you've noticed it twice, Stan, uh, Liggins being wide open. A lot easier to see it up here, though, Certainly. Greg, than it is down there with the uh, the rush coming. But I tell you, that's the difference that, uh, between a great quarterback and a good quarterback is seeing all those things. Vision plays a predominant role in the key positions. That's why Larry Bird is so good, because he sees everything. They're down. William McLeod dropped it, got it back, and then got his bail rung. He was really popped there by Jerry Smith. But he does make the catch, which changes the situation now. Are they still going to punt it, or are they going to try a long field goal? You can see the ball pop out of his hands. He takes his eye off of it, but he has enough presence to go back and get the ball. He takes the big hit by Jerry Smith that holds on. But with that yardage, it allows him to kick a field goal. Without that yardage, he'd have had to punt it. It's not that long of a field goal, 45 yards. Pretty good wind Sergio coming out. Yes, just wind behind him. From this distance, he's made one of four. It's up. It is no good. He just pulled that directly left. Yeah, there was a good breeze, good wind coming through here. He could have got it there. We have exactly eight minutes to play in the fourth quarter of the California Bowl. And the team from California leads by four at 27 to 23. Following Alvarez's miss from 45, the Hurons take it at their own 28. Down by four. The wind kicking up. The rain has subsided. They're in Fresno. Adam spins 360, pitches to Patton, who makes a good inside cut and picks up great yards before being pulled down from behind by a defensive lineman. Number 76, Richard Johnson, pulled him down. It's a good thing Richard Johnson got him, too, because he was the last guy that had a good shot at him. This is what they're hoping to get against his 46. Out there, good position. Now, watch his cutback right there, right down the hash mark. Now watch Johnson. He doesn't make it. He can break outside that cut, and he may go all the way, because I don't think Cox is going to catch him. Gary Patton is now three yards away from 100, rushing on only 16 carries. Hot roll, 7.38 to play. Spartans up four. Patton dodges two behind the line. Oh, he's going the wrong way. <laughs> Is that quarterback tackled him? <laughs> he actually backed into Adams. <laughs> That's the two co-MVP <laughs> offensive players meeting in their own backfield yeah, I don't for think a big loss. I don't think they'll show that at the awards ceremony when they give him the co-MVP. Watch him right here. He, may, he makes three or four men miss, but he ends up going the wrong direction. Now watch right here. Oh, I got you. 
<laughs> Come on down before you lose any more. He was looking for the ball to make sure he didn't lose it. <laughs> yeah. Seven Keep yards they ball. lost. Seven yard drop. So he was at 97. Now he's at 90. Yeah, Gary Pat. Eastern Michigan remains in the game. You look back to that holding penalty that negated the run for San Jose inside the five yard line. Back slip into the eye on a second and 17. Adams pressured. Cox missed him though. He steps up and runs. And he's hit by two or three. Spartans, maybe the toughest one of all. Yepi Pa'u'u out of Santa Ana, a senior. Well, that's what they have on that defense. A lot of guys that can move, a lot of guys that can run, and they can close those gaps. It looked when he took off from the pocket like he had a lot of room to run, but by the time he got back to the line of scrimmage, there was three and four guys ready to hit him, and they did. Tenth third down for Eastern Michigan. They picked up four of their first nine. They need 12 yards on this play. They need midfield. They hand off to Patton. He's going to get midfield and more. He cuts it. Now he stumbles. He was trying to make the move outside and pop it the whole way. And he just stumbled inside the 30-yard line. 25-yard gain for Gary Patton. What a good call. In fact, the bobble snap made it even look more effective. Like it was not going to be a draw play. You see a good block air cuts the linebacker down. Patton's just taking off. He goes to make the break right here on Rasnick. You see if Rasnick got him from the heel from behind. I think he didn't slip. I think Rasnick got him from behind on the heel, which got him down. Other than that, he may still be running. Big day for Gary Patton. What a way to close out his uh, illustrious career at Eastern Michigan. Now he takes a blow. Bob Foster comes in number 22. They run the fullback Nash, though, off a counter. He carries people to about the 22-yard line. Nash is put together. Five out of the half, 235-pound freshman from Muskegon, Michigan. Reminds me of a teammate of mine, the human bowling ball, Don, Don Nottingham. Nottingham. <laughs> I grew up in Buffalo, New York, rooting for the Bills. I never liked Don Nottingham. <laughs> I guess you did. Much much I like career either. Yeah. <laughs> you were a smart player. I, I enjoyed watching you. I tell you what, Nottingham went to Kent State, which is yes. an MAC school, and uh, he set a lot of records down there. Uh, Kent's uh, doing real well in their own right right now with Len Mason as their head coach. They beat Kansas this year, the Big 18. Oh, he's a former uh, teammate of yours with the Buckeyes. Second down, four yards to go. Here's a pitch behind Jimmy Johnson. He picks it up, and then he's pulled down by Greg Cox. Just a bad pitch by Adams. Adams is a... Uh, is making some bad decisions here. The interception, now watch his pitch. He sees the crash man coming, which means he has to pitch the ball, but he just put too much velocity on it. He to loft a little bit so Johnson could run under it. Second and four, they go to third and 14, which is like death against this Spartan defense. They pin their ears back, they come. Got burnt the last time in long yardage. They came on third and 16. Will they do it again? Stan, it's getting late here. We have four or eight to play. They need the 18-yard line. Adams going for it all. It's out there. It is caught for a touchdown. And that is Craig Ostrander. Going deep all the way. Watch right here. It's just the back split. It's maximum protection. He just throws it deep down the sideline. It's good coverage. He just misses the ball. Ostrander comes down with it for the touchdown. He's there. Phil Fresh is there. He just has to knock the ball down. He's right there. He's just back there ready to knock it down. He misses it. Jim Harkin has said Phil Frash is their weakest defensive player on San Jose State's team. He is not gifted with great speed, but he has not been beaten yet deep this year until right there. And you know Harkin has saved that one for when he wanted it, and they needed it. Touchdown, 32 yards. Adams on the pass to Craig Ostrander. And the Huron 17-point underdogs have a three-point lead with four minutes to play. First century institution committed to providing a personal education to each of its more than 23,000 students. Offering more than 180 graduate and undergraduate programs, Eastern Michigan University is nationally recognized in forensics, language and international trade, special education, geography and geology, theater arts, nursing, teacher education, and chemistry. 
the university is equally committed to the personal and social development of its students, as exemplified by its National Model Cooperative Education Program and World Class Recreation Center. In addition, Eastern Michigan is a proud member of the Mid-American Conference and offers a comprehensive program of competitive sports for men and women. Finally, the university is a partner in the economic development and improvement of the community and the region and will be a pioneer in the training and retraining of individuals and businesses through its developing corporate education center and center for entrepreneurship. Eastern Michigan University, excellence in education. California Bowl is being brought to you by the Fresno Convention and Visitors Bureau by Buick and your Buick dealer. The Great American Road belongs to Buick. And by Delta Airlines. Well, Greg, I told you they should have went for one after the last touchdown. Oh, I don't want to hear it. Behind. I don't want to hear it out of you. <laughs> 3.59 to play. Adams to Ostrander, 32 yards. Caps off that 72-yard drive. In the second half, Adams is thrown for 121 yards, or pardon me, 100 yards on 7 of 12. In the first half, he threw for no yards. Hit two of three, but no yards. Real position off this kickoff is important. It's going to be a short kick again. It's going down to James Saxon at his 15-yard line. 35, 40, look at this. 46-yard line. they got to get a kicker. I tell you that. They cannot allow that to happen. They might as well squib the ball down there and hope that they can't run it back. That's killing them. And that, the only reason the guy is out there is because he's a long kicker. I can't believe they're not instructing him to do that. Well, he's not even getting the ball 50 yards downfield. Well, horrible. He's looking like he's kicking as hard as he can. I, you need to run on a kickoff. Take advantage of it. Not kicking a field goal. Well, Gilbert's team is down three, but he has Mike Perez, who has brought his team back late. Time and time again, Perez throws. Kenny Jackson complete, gets a block. 50, 45. He's shoved out of bounds in Eastern Michigan territory by Dan Bennett. Freshman corner, 344 to play. He got out of bounds, too. That stops the clock. Just a little dump pass. You watch it, uh, he'll have to. He'll have to Right now, he's going to have to pump once. And remember, got knocked down earlier. This time, he pumps, lets a man come back down and gets the ball out. But Anthony Johnson, that time, has got to stay outside. He has contained. He can't let him get down the sidelines. Kenny Jackson's having a big day. Again, last year in the California Bowl, he was hurt early. Wound up with six carries, 18 yards. He has caught seven passes today for 58. And the handoff goes to James Saxon, pulling his way across the 35-yard line. I'll tell you what, there is no overtime, so... If they do get stopped, what do you do, huh? Do you go for the field goal for the tie, or do you go all the way for the win? I think a tie would uh, really uh, put a thorn in the side of their season at San Jose State. I, I would have taken anything less than a win, and they wouldn't have a successful season. I would have kicked the extra point when I had a shot before. I told you that. I told you that. Stan White is the ultimate second guesser. <laughs> Even second guessing himself. <laughs> we have a second and three. Perez throws, McLeod drops it and catches his bobble, but he didn't get anything. That's the difference the step makes. By the time he bobbles Certainly. it, the pursuit is there. If he catches it clean, he may get past that first wave. They've used this play many times today, and they've given it off on that play. Remember, Saxon walked in for a touchdown. This time it's the fake, throw out to the flat. Now, if he gets it, goes there, he can beat the first wave, but by the time that ball comes down, forget it. There's two, three guys there lucky to get back to the line. He could have got by Eric Miller if he'd have caught it cleanly. Senior lineman Phil Selecko ran him down out of Blue Island, Illinois. Well, you two, know it's 24 to play. You know it's four down territory here, so it's third and two. Running play wouldn't be bad. Next split, Perez drops straight. Stumbles, fires. It is tipped and almost picked off by Charles Gordon. Great coverage there. Run the intended him. receiver was Kenny Roberts. He's saying I should have caught the ball. You catch the ball there, you might ice the game. Watch it. Watch the ball thrown behind. He slips there. Maybe that's why. But the ball's thrown behind the receiver, and Gordon comes in, almost makes the interception. If he wouldn't have collided with Kenny Roberts, he probably would have come down with it. Charles Gordon's a strong player. First team All Mac this year. Fourth down. This is this is the play of the game right here. Well, right now the field goal is 52. That's too far. 2:15 to play. Not playing for a tie. They need the 32-yard line. Perez throws. It is dropped by Saxon. Eastern Michigan has the ball with 2.10 to go. And they're going wild on the sideline. Not that sideline. Claude Gilbert of the Spartans are almost dead. That sideline. 
what a story this Huron team is. Well, I was so surprised they went zone. It's almost like give them the first down. They throw the little check down pass. Saxon's got it easily. All he's got to turn turned around and run. Head, turned his head too early. Oh, I mean, tell you what, all the things he's done this year, uh, you got to, the play he'll remember is that one if they don't uh, make a big play. They have two timeouts yes. left. And they will use them on defense. And there is no two-minute warning to stop the clock in college football. Gary Patton has the job along with that line of running this thing out. Pick up a couple of firsts, and the Hurons are going to win this bowl game. They don't get anything on this play as Pa'u'u slanted in there and tripped him up in the backfield. No gain. And they call timeout right away. You've got to use your timeouts as soon as you can. 2-0-3 to play. Eastern Michigan has the ball and a three-point lead. Rick Pappas, Stan White, back in Fresno. We just each filled out our MVP ballot. We voted for Perez. I, you did for San Jose. I voted for Kenny Jackson. But for Eastern Michigan, we both voted for Gary Patton. And right now, he's the man. He has to sort this thing out. Two oh, nice to play. right here. Here's Patton hit behind the line, breaks a tackle, bounces off. And he's down to the 41-yard line. He picked up six when he should have had nothing, but he stayed on his feet. Gary Patton today has gone for 120 yards on 20 carries. Yeah, again, the same guy, Greg Cox. I mean, you know they're going to run the football. Wild go in there like a wild hare. You know, go under control. You're coming free. Just make the tackle. Timeout called. Last one expended by the Spartans. 1.45 to play. We're facing now a third down and three. Here's the play again. It's that little sprint draw. Now watch, he's coming free. What's he? All he has to do is slow down, get under control, and he still gets him for at least no gain, if not a two-yard loss. Now watch that great play. I mean, good balance by Patton. They're lucky he didn't break this for an even longer because a first down salts the game away right now. It's it if they make a first down because there's no timeouts left for San Jose State. Third down and four. Boy, Jim Harkema has some decision to make here. What do you do on third and four, Stan? I mean, Patton's run well, but four yards to pick up is tough on a running play. You run the football because you're going to get at least 30-some seconds off the clock. You're going to be close to a minute left by the time the other team gets the ball. Eastern Michigan facing their 11th. Third down conversion try they've made five of the first ten. With a three-point lead, you also know that San Jose State has got to go all the way for the touchdown. They are not going to kick a field goal for the time at this point. They've got to go all the way. If there's a two-point lead, you might want to pass in this situation. Bootleg Adams keeps it. He has field, and he has the first down at the 47-yard line. Ron Adams on a bootleg. They went up the middle. He kept it and went left. That's a good call on a key play of the game. You get everybody wanting to make the play. And nope, this guy over here just did not hold his position. I can't, I didn't get the number on that, who that was, the outside man over there. I think it was Tim Wells, number 49. But he has that control on the outside. And he just got over answers trying to make the play. And as an outside linebacker, that was my position. You have to be... You have to know you cannot make the play on the other side of the right, field. Right, right. I mean, you got to take care of your own responsibility. He didn't. All they got to do is fall on the ball now. They didn't even have to do anything. The only negative about that play, and it's a very minor one, he didn't he didn't stay in bounds. But who cares? He picked up the first down. Confusion reigns here. Bob Foster was running on the field. I'm not sure how many players the Hurons had on the field in this situation. They, they only ran had, the play. They only had 10. They don't need to have 11. It's, you know, as long as you have seven on the line, that's all you have to do. Better too little than too many. Clock rolls, 120 to play. Eastern Michigan, 17-point underdogs. Are 115 away from the biggest victory in the school's history after many big victories this year. What a year for the Hurons. Best year ever in the 95-year history. Adams goes to one knee. 58 seconds to play. The Spartans are out of timeouts, and they can't do anything about it. And the one stat, the biggest stat of the ball game, is Adams and the Hurons celebrate, and well, they should. Time of possession 
Eastern Michigan 36.05. San Jose State 23.55. Jim Harkema's wishbone attack the game plan was dead on today. Well, this is the culmination of bringing this program from nothing all the way to the pinnacle of being the champion of the Cal Bowl. I mean, who would have thought Eastern Michigan, when they were losing 27 games in a row, would ever come close to something like this? They hand off. I don't know why they did that. It's the shades of uh, Pasarczyk to Zanka, but they don't fumble. 15 seconds to go, and it's over. Yeah, Herman Eastern Edwards. Michigan runs out. Herman Edwards, the guy who picked it up, is an assistant coach for San Jose State on that uh, Zanka fumble. So <laughs> maybe he was thinking of it on the sideline. Well, he was a happy man that day. He's a sad man today, but Jim Harkema runs off the field with a victory over San Jose State. The Mid-American Conference snaps the PCAA's three-game win streak and it's very much a surprise. San Jose State, favored by 17, loses by three. For Stan White, this is Greg Papa saying so long from the seventh annual California Bowl in Fresno. The final again, Eastern Michigan 30 and San Jose State 27.